to you for the privilege to be in his presence this morning. He said, Blessed is that man that he has chosen. The Lord has chosen you to approach before him this morning because he wants to bless you. Lift up your voice with excitement. Begin to glorify the name of the Lord. Bless him for bringing you into this service this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we appreciate you. We thank you for the privilege to appear before you in Zion. Father, we thank you for what you are said to do this morning. Father, we thank you for bringing us here. Lord, we lift up our voice of appreciation to give glory unto your name. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for bringing us this morning. Father, we thank you for what you are said to do this morning. Father, we thank you for the blessings that await us in this service, in the first service, the second service, and all the services. Father, we give glory unto your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We lay it to heart to give glory unto your name for bringing us here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Now begin to speak to the Lord. It's the covenant day of marital breakthrough. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you have named it what you are said to do. Father, settle everyone in this service. Begin to speak to the Lord. Settle me. By your word, send to me maritally. By your word, send my own word. Send my own word in this service. The word that will send to me maritally. The word that will give me my own marital breakthrough. You are the one that said the solitary in family. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my expectations are before you. Begin to speak to the Lord. Make known your expectation. For expectation is the mother of manifestation. Begin to speak to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach out to me today. Reach out to me today. And send to me by your word. Send your word unto me. By your word that we come today. Let my home be healed. Let my marital life be settled. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, in this service today, let your name be glorified. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. I know the Lord has visited you. You have a testimony. Please move to any of the major entrances. Document your testimony. And the Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. With joy and excitement, let's invite the Faith Tabernacle Choir. Somebody lift your hands to heaven as we worship our Father. He's worthy of praise. Hi. And Otinakis. Glorious God. Beautiful King. Excellent God. I bow before. You're the glorious God, glorious God. beautiful King, excellent God. I bow before Your throne, glorious God. You're the glory 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Is somebody ready to give up eyes this morning? Magnificent is your name, omnipotent, omniscient are you, Lord Jesus. You are magnificent. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Hey, we lift your name 
Hallelujah. Shout it loud. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big, big clap of praise. And you may be comfortably seated. Our call to worship this morning in this first service is taken from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 21 through to verse 27. Joel, chapter 2, beginning from verse 21, we are reading responsibly to verse 27. Joel, chapter 2 and verse 21. Fear not, O Lord. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. 20, verse 22, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth a fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. It will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first morn. Verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the vase shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar. And the palma worm. My great army which I send amongst you. Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Now let us read verse 27 together. One, two, go. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. You are welcome to church. Give the Lord a big, big clap of praise. Please, let's listen attentively to the faith tabernacle announcement for this first service. Number one, praise the Lord. Be reminded that we are in the midst of the year prophetic season. Daily prayers and gospel raids hold throughout this season. Note that the daily prayer hold, holds in designated zones across Lagos and Otter. And the time is 8 to 9.30 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, except on Wednesday evenings. It is a platform to ensure that all our senior citizens, the aged, nursing mothers, partake of this kingdom advancement endeavor. Remember, there's a place for everyone in a revival. Your place shall not be taken in this revival season. Amen. Amen. Number two, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that the Faith Tabernacle 24-hour Global Rescue Call Center is in full operation. If you are clapping, you can make it bigger. This platform a set up for prayers, counseling, information on events, and general, general inquiries. The call center number is plus 234-7080-638000. Number three, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday through Saturday, both here in Canaan land and in all our designated locations across Lagos and Otter. The time again is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number four, praise the Lord. Christ commanded that we share our testimonies as we saw in the cleansing of the ten lepers. How he questioned, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Only the one that returned had his healing perfected. Therefore, share your testimonies with us and they shall not only be perfected, they shall be preserved and multiplied. Send your testimonies to testimonies at davidoyedikoministries.com. Number five, praise the Lord. Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow, Monday. Note that this can be either online on the link bfc.lfcww.org or live at any of our BFC centers 
across Lagos, Alta, and Environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS, and the time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Midway Communion Service hosts this coming Wednesday, both here in Canaan Land and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Alta, and Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion, and the time is 6 p.m. Number seven, Winner Satellite Fellowship. Our House Wars Fellowship holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Otter. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time, and don't miss this for anything. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Right now, in this service, it is testimony time. Please give Jesus a big hand. Please let Brother Bright Imalili, Brother Bright Imalili, please proceed quickly to the altar area to share your testimony. Let's conclude quickly in the announcement. Number eight, recommended books of the month, authored by Bishop David Oyeriko, includes Finding Revival Fire, The Wisdom That Works, Walking in Wisdom, Conquering Controlling Powers, Walking in the Newness of Life, and all you need to have all your needs met. Finally, number nine, next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our encounter with destiny service. It shall be our prophetic entrance into the month of July. Come expecting an encounter with a prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. We shall be holding four services. The times again, 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Please give the Lord a big hand. One more time in this service. It is testimony time. Please come forward and share your testimony with God's people. Church, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Bright Imalile. I have come to return all the glory to God. Delivered from a complex health challenge. Sometimes in October last year, I became sick and I was hospitalized. Several tests were carried out on me in the quest to know exactly what the case was, but all to no avail, as every test and CT scan came with different results, then leaving the doctors confused. So I was placed on a series of treatment just for me to be fine. Instead, as months go by, my health issue was getting worse. In fact, I have lost weight beyond recognition. January 15 this year, I came to see Papa with the help of my area pastor. Papa placed his hand on my forehead and declared, I command this complex situation to be reversed and disappear from you right now. Thereafter, a consultant surgeon was invited to examine my case, and he said I was suffering from obstructive joint as a result of gallbladder blockage, and I am, on, I am to undergo a major surgery. Then I was also informed it will require a miracle, but I asked them to go ahead because I trust the God I serve and where I belong to in the faith. To the glory of God Almighty, after about 12 hours after the surgery, God of this commission restored me back to life. I have come to return all the glory to God. Hallelujah. You can see the picture there. God restored him fully. He's alive and well in the sanctuary. Are you clapping for Jesus? Please, let's listen to this documented testimony and it is captioned, Marriage Restored After Seven Years. Church, put those hands together for the Lord. I got married in 2010 and three years later, my husband left home while waiting for the fruit of the womb. I prayed for the restoration of my home, and it, took, and it looked like the more I prayed, the more there was no result. However, I remembered Bishop David Oedipo kept saying that serving God places us on God's payroll. I joined the sanctuary unit and engaged in kingdom advancement prayers. I prayed for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb and those believing God for marital breakthrough. God 
did it. After seven years, my husband returned home. And my home was fully restored. I return all the glory to the God of this commission. And the testifier is Jagade Helen. In this service, you are next in line for your own testimony. In the name of Jesus. Put those blessings hands together for the Lord. Let somebody shout the loudest. Hallelujah. Today is the last Sunday in the month of June. And I know God has done somebody well. If you are the person, shout the loud. Amen. Amen. Therefore, right now in this service, it's time for end of month special Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication. Give the Lord a big clap offering. <laughs> Praise God. So shortly we all shall be upstanding. The choir shall be leading us in high praises together. We shall be rejoicing before the Lord God Almighty, returning all the glory unto him for all of his benefits in our lives as individuals and together as a church family. And we shall be having in front here the children and the marriages that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication right before the altar. And also, all of us have something special to thank God for. If you have space, you come to the front of the altar. If not, wherever you may be together, we shall be rejoicing and returning all the glory unto God. Let's read from the book of Psalms chapter 95 as our anchor scripture, verses 1 and 2, before we get on our feet and having the people listed in front of the altar. Psalms chapter 95, verses 1 and 2. Please make sure you have your thanksgiving and dedication seed in your hand. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Look at verse 2. It says, let us come before his presence with what? With thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Make a joyful noise right now. Please rise up on your feet with me. I have come with thanksgiving. I have come with thanksgiving. Say that with me. I have come with thanksgiving. Louder, please. I have come with thanksgiving. Put your wonderful hands together for the Lord. Now let's go, choir, as we have the people listed in front. What the Lord has done for me, come and see. Come and see, oh, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see, oh, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see. Come and see, he has changed my story. Come and see, oh, he has given me a new name. If it were to be mad, I wouldn't be. Come and see, come and see. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus, you praise your name. Oh, if it were to be mad. If it were to be man, I will surely pay. If it were to be man, I will really pay. He has changed my story, he has given me a new name. If it were to be man, I will surely pay. Come and see, come and see, come and see. Jesus, we give you the glory. Come and see, come and see, come and see. 
Lord, the Lord, hallelujah. Now, would you please bow your heads and lift up your voice and personally thank God. In your own words, give him thanks. Give him thanks for what the Lord has done for you. Let's give him thanks in your own language, in your own word, from the depth of your soul. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. God deserves it and God demands it. So let's give it to him. Let's glorify his name. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Accept our thanksgiving, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have returned today in obedience to your command to thank you for all of your faithfulness in our lives. Lord, accept our thanksgiving. For all of the children that are here today, for thanksgiving and dedication, they are your gift and they are your heritage. They came from you. Father, today they are being handed over to you. Let your spirit rest upon them. As they are being anointed right now, let them be set apart. Let their names answer in the high places of the earth. In this season of glory, they shall not know shame. We use them as point of contact for those who are believing you for miracle children. Father, settle them supernaturally. For all of the marriages that are here today, for thanksgiving and dedication, Lord, over them accept our thanksgiving. These marriages are declared blessed, fruitful, and prosperous in the name of Jesus. They will live long together. We use them as point of contact for those who are believing you for miracle marriages. Father, especially on this marital settlement covenant day, settle them supernaturally. For each and every one standing here today, thanking you for the many blessings of yours upon our lives, Father, accept our thanksgiving. For divine healing, we thank you. For divine protection, we thank you. For divine provisions, we thank you. For miracle jobs, miracle houses, bad days, anniversary, new houses, new vehicles, new businesses. Father, and the list goes on and on. For every good thing, accept our thanksgiving. And whatever your people are standing here today thanking you for, Father, let them be preserved. Let them be multiplied. Lord, the shout of joy, let it continue to be in our habitation. This same time next month, we shall all have many more reasons to return with thanksgiving in our lips. So shall it be. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given time. Take your thanksgiving seat, please, and dedication seat. Will you please lift it up unto God and present it to God yourself as you give him praise and give him glory. Father, we thank you. This thanksgiving and dedication seed are declared blessed and acceptable and multiplied back a miracle fold. So shall it be. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout the Lord and believe in him. Amen. Wave your hands to the Lord and say, Father, I thank you today. The loudest you can. One more time, Father, I thank you today. Shout the Lord and say, Amen. Again, together, the choir will lead us in high praises. We shall be rejoicing. Please make sure that your children are word anointed and drop your thanksgiving and dedication. Say, praise God. Choir. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. Aha. What a powerful God. What a marvelous. He's here to do marvelous things for me. Hallelujah. What a marvelous God. Please, I 
and wonders for this miracle, for this healing. Say what a marvelous God. You are marvelous, marvelous, you are marvelous, you are marvelous. Marvelous is for me. Jehovah, magnificent God. Marvelous God. Now alone I want it to be praised. You're the miracle in my life today. Marvelous God. in my life today. Marvelous God. Marvelous God. Oh, you name of my end. Now I love now I want it to be praised. You're the miracle in my life today. Marvelous God. Marvelous God. Such a blessed, such a Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. I'm pleased you may be seated in his presence. Today it is my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday like this, may I ask that you stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. I thought somebody was clapping for Jesus as these precious people rise everywhere, our God is worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. Please remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a welcome package. Along with it, you'll be given a card that you need to fill in the course of this welcome. Once you've received those two items, you may take your seat and begin to fill that card. Please make sure you get those two items in your hand before you are seated and immediately begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church universal, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedeko. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a center of signs and wonders by divine mandate, where God turns impossible cases into open miracles. We continuously see God changing the stories of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, as they engage with the truth of the word as taught on this mountain. For over four decades, God has continued to confirm his word in this church, thereby making every member a wonder to many as they believe. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive from here for the next three months. The Lord God will bless you openly as he did Obedidom. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. I want to welcome you today to this home of signs and wonders. May today's encounter usher you into the realms of ear-tingling testimonies that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, to all of our first-time worshipers, we say, Welcome home. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. At this point, may I request for all our first-time worshipers to rise for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for these precious people. You have drawn them by your mighty hand. You brought them here for a blessing. And therefore, by your authority, we declare each one of them blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, for any one of these precious people that are yet to have experienced the blessing of salvation, we declare that today shall be for them the day of their salvation. Lord, for any one of them that left a concern behind, an issue that has caused them concern in their heart, let today be a turnaround day for each one of them. May the testimonies they have long awaited be delivered by the encounters of this day. We thank you because we know that you have done it already. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. 
Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. It is done. Please be seated. Ensure that your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you're welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Good news. It is offering time. I said it is offering time. If you haven't already done so, quickly package your worship seed, your tithe, and any other thing that you have proposed to give in your heart to the Lord today. And while we do, please be reminded that we have various means or channels of giving. You can give in cash. You can give by sending an electronic transfer. You can also use our various electronic channels. Um, and whatever way you are giving, just ensure that it's made presentable before the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thy increase. We have an opportunity this morning to honor yet the Lord again. And as we do, he will honor each one of us in return. In the name of Jesus. If you are done packaging your worship seed and whatever it is you are giving, rise on your feet, lift up your worship seed or any other thing you have proposed in your heart to give and water this seed with the voice, words of your mouth this morning. Lift up your voice with your hands lifted up and water your seed. Thanking the Lord first and foremost for the privilege to be a giver. Father, thank you. I give you praise and I give you glory for the privilege to give. As I sow this seed on this kingdom earth, I know the harvest is in view. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Keep your seat lifted up. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we present our worship seat to you today and every other thing that your people may have proposed to give in their hearts. We ask that as this seed is sown on this kingdom earth today, the harvest is in view for everyone. Father, your word says, if we honor you, you will honor us in return. Therefore, as we present this honor seed this morning, we anticipate the honor you are bringing us in return. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name. Please be seated. We welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir to minister to the Lord and to bless us. Hallelujah, amen. 
two hands to heaven, everyone, and give God thanks for the privilege to see the last Sunday in the month of June. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. It is light that gives meaning to life. 
ask a blind man, the whole world is without form and void. He can't see anything. The Bible refers to the light of the world as the light of life. The light of life. You catch any light from this book, it manifests itself in real life. Real life. In him was life, and the life is the light of man. The life of man. And that light shines in darkness, darkness can't handle it. Lord, give me an encounter with the light of your world that will release new lease of life in my life. Go ahead and pray. Grant me an encounter with the light of your world that will light in my path in the journey of life. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Lord Jesus, we are here waiting for an encounter with the light of your world. Let your light break forth into everyone's heart today. Amen. And let no one return from here without a testimony to share. Amen. Take all the praise. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. 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 Amen. Thank you, Lord. Remember, we are still in the midst of the year a season of revival ordained for dramatic change of story for every engaging believer. No one here shall be left out. Yeah. Your crown, another man will not take. Yeah. All your mockers will know you are serving a living God. Yeah. God will turn many of us to surprises to ourselves. Yeah. Because he never lies. Although the fig tree may not blossom right now, there might not be fruit in the vine. But keep engaging with joy and rejoicing. It will show up and make you feel like hands free and get you up upon your high places. Yeah. You are changing levels. Yeah. If we care to do what he says to do, we will never need to beg him to do what he says he will do. Feed the water pots with water. Okay, sir. Take a cup of it, give to the governor of the feast. Okay, sir. The sweetest wine ever. Just do what he says to do. You won't need to beg him to do what he says he will do. The greatest problem of the believer is obedience. Willful obedience. You know what is right. You just won't do it. And you are saying, God, you must. No. You can't command him in disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled, you will avenge all disobedience. When your own obedience, my own obedience is complete, every disobedience will bow to our authority. Have a right to command. In the name of Jesus, the plague of disobedience is broken off everyone's life. <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. We 
We're on part four of this today, the last in that series. And today is also a covenant day of marital breakthroughs. God will calm every storm in every marriage. God will terminate every siege of marital delay. Amen. Tension will dissolve this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In a revival, everlasting mountains are brought down. Now, whatever appears a generation across on anyone's life maritally, Jesus will bring it down today. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. By way of introduction, when God is out of the equation in one's life, frustration sets in. The book of Psalm chapter 14 and verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. When God is out of the equation, one becomes a fool. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none of them that does well. Frustration sets in. When God is out of the equation in any man's life, in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 35, the Bible says, A wise man shall inherit his glory. The wise shall inherit glory. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. So while the wise is going from glory to glory, the foolish is going from shame to shame, shame to shame, without end. When God is out of the equation in any man's life, frustration sets in. You shall not know frustration anymore. You know why? Without me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. Without God, we are utterly helpless. It appears something is working, but like a pack of cards overnight, you can't see it again. Romans 9, 16. It's not of him that will it, or of him that will run it, but God has showed mercy. And 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. By strength shall no man prevail. Frustration sets in when God is out of the equation in any man's life. A revival is a time where God shows up in the midst of his people. I am here for your rescue. I'm here for your salvation. I'm here to give meaning to your life. A genuine heart for God and, and the interest of his kingdom is the anchor of every great destiny in the kingdom. It's not praying and breaking your head for it. A genuine heart for God and the interest of his kingdom is the anchor of every great destiny in scriptures. Abraham, a friend of God, and love is the cord of friendship. Abraham became a nation, like a dream of the night. God picked him up at 75. He wasn't too old for God to make a wonder out of his life. And we saw his heart for God. Whatever God said over was above every other thing he had in plan. Get out of the country, he went out. Circumcised the first all the mayborns in your family, it began. Take your only son Isaac and go to the, I mean, uh, he, he was an emperor. As at that time, he had a schedule. But whatever God said was final. That was his heart. And today, Christ died to bring us into the blessings of Abraham. Generational blessings. Paul, a man 
with a heart for God. The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Every great destiny in the kingdom anchors on a genuine heart for God and the interests of his kingdom. Paul said for me to live his Christ, to die his gain. Paul is still alive today. We are calling his name every day. He has refused to die. There are many names here that will never die. Amen. Your genuine heart for God today will keep speaking for generations to come. Amen. For eyes have not seen or ears have. It hasn't entered the heart of any man. What God has in stock for them that love him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. When God occupies the central stage of a man's life, all things begin to work together for his good. All things. All things. When God occupies the central stage of a man's life, all things begin to work together for his good. Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for them. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. They are in love with God. And God turns them to a living wonder among men. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. They are the order of happiness in their lives. And that will be your experience from now. As you give God his rightful place, things will keep going right for you. Things will keep going right for you. Things will keep going right for you. The Bible says, Matthew 22, 36 to 40, which is the greatest commandment of the law. And Jesus answered, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. It overflows to those around you. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two commandments operate, hangs all the laws and the prophets. Makes it work. When God and the interest of his kingdom becomes one's priority for living, he steps into the realm of fearful favor with God. Fearful favor. Fearful favor with God. Fearful favor. Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the said time is come. For thy servant takes pleasure in the affairs of Zion. Zion is a church. He favor every aspect of it. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord through that life. And all the ends of the earth, thy glory. Fearful favor is what pertains to those who makes God and Israel's the kingdom their priority for living. Matthew 6 33. All these things shall be added to you without asking for it. Seek you first the interest of my kingdom in all righteousness. Not with ulterior motive, no, 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 not with eye service, make them see me kind of stuff. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. We serve an awesome God. We just need to come awake to the things required of us to do so that God can be allowed to do what he says he will do. He won't do it until we do what he asks us to do. As I've cried and you will not listen, so you will cry and I will not hearken. Zechariah chapter 7 verse 13. You hear me first before you can commit me to do what I want to do. You cannot commit me by crying. You commit me by obeying what I ask you to do. And then you won't beg me to do it. I said I will. And I will do it. Praise God. Fearful favor. The kind that your church is enjoying today. Fearful favor. The things that happen with us as a church, the world can't understand it. Fearful favor. Fearful favor. 
stress-free adventure. God glorifying breakthroughs. That will be your portion. <laughs> to be without God in this world is to be without hope, which is a breeding ground for depression. People that are having a great walk with God never see depression in his presence, fullness of joy, pleasures evermore. You can't find depression in a man that is actively working with God. You can't find it. Lot of people talk about burnout in ministry. I've never seen burnout. And I walk the hours. The hours also walk me. I've never seen burnout. With God at the center of your life, my God, your hope is alive. You can see the end of the tunnel in every conflict. My God. Jesus, who for the judge was said before him, endure the cross, nonsense. They say, please, all day I'm going. Despite the shame, I see him now set at the right hand of majesty on high. He can see. I caused the siege of depression in your life. Amen. In his presence, his fullness of joy. On his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. Working with Jesus and graces the believer to live above depression. Naturally, without any jiggy jiggy anything. Praise God. Somebody asked me years ago, Brother David, do you ever have problems? I said, Maybe it came, I didn't know. Maybe it came, I didn't know. I've not had people say sorry to me for many, many years in my life. Sorry. I don't look sorrowful. How do you say sorry? Some enjoy it so much. I, the more sorry they say to you, the more your sorrow is compounded. Don't need that. There was battle raging against the Most High God. He said, that said, in heaven shall laugh. Something is breaking forth in your life. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 12. To be without God is to be without hope. But by redemption, we have been begotten to a lively hope. 1 Peter 1, 3, a lively hope. So we have a living hope. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4, it said, to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Because a living dog is better than a dead lion. When you are joined to God, your hope is alive. When you disconnect, your hope is lost. So stay connected and keep your hope alive. Praise God. You have heard me say several times, I'm not surprised that grace has brought us to where we are. I would have been surprised if he didn't. Because we have done what he says to do. He's committed to do what he says he will do. Can I hear your amen? amen. So, since inception, we've been pushing God and his kingdom, the internet of his kingdom, as a church. He has never stopped adding color to us. 42 years running. Awesome God. Ever dependable. It's your turn. But no one can be on two sides at the same time. Everyone must have to choose which side to be. How long are you going to hold between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If it be bad, then follow him. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. Two cities in which shall serve. And Joshua said, but as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. It's a choice to make. It's a choice to make. You can't serve God and mama. You have to choose one and despise the other. And everyone's lot in life is a function of his choice. I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. My prayer in this 
awesome season is that you make a choice to go with God and everything will start going well with you. A choice to serve the living God or other gods is yours and mine to make. But a choice to serve God, listen to me, is a choice for all round rest in a world of unrest. All round rest, including marital, business, career, children, all round rest. A choice to serve God in truth and in deed is a choice for all round rest in a world of unrest. The world is under the siege of unrest. Everybody's running head and scatter. But they enter into covenant to, serve, to seek God with all their heart and with the whole of their desire. And God gave them rest round about. Round about means in all areas. In all areas. You will have rest over your children. Rest over your marriage. Rest over your career. Rest over your business. That is what a choice to serve God with all your heart and with the whole of your desire guarantees. Oh, taste, and you see that the Lord is good. There is no shame to them that wait on him. Come and taste. God is good. God is good. Let's stop playing religion. Let's become real. Let's come real. God is real. God is not a myth. No man can make God first in his life and misses his enviable place in destiny. You can't make God first and miss your enviable place in destiny. When he would do that part, obeyed Elijah, make for me first. She became the envy of the entire city for that season. She was robust. Others were agar. Your enviable destiny is secured if you will care to make God first. Make God first. Make God first. And watch what he does with your life. I signed that deal with my heavenly father. I've said it too many times. Many are tired of hearing it, but I'm not tired of saying it. Because it's decorating my life. It gives me natural fulfillment, no coercion, no tension. Seek ye first the interest of God and his kingdom. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. Oh, they, they may not happen today, but they are reserved for me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Incorruptible, that means indestructible. Reserved for you. No devil can destroy it. If you will stay true, to your covenant to serve him. You can't give God the first place and not emerge an enviable citizen. No. All the ones who would rather die than miss God in scriptures, they were enviable frontliners. Enviable Abraham, Moses, my God. Enviable frontliners, Daniel, Nehemiah, David, a man after God's own heart. He became a hero as a teenager at 17. 17, a man with a heart for God. You can't give God his place and miss your place. You can't give God his place and miss your place. I've been on several prayer and fasting episodes. I, I, I have not identified one where I went for myself. 
It's not prayer episode when I got called to ministry, before I got called to ministry. Several. Oh God, manifest yourself to this generation. You know, the husband man that laborer will be the first particle of the fruit. If you don't carry the kingdom in your heart, you, you have a long way to go, sir. A long way to go. I've never branched in any man's house in my life. Can you assist me on what to eat or what to drink? Yet, I've never gone fasting because of lack of food. Somebody's told is changing. The things which are written for time, they are written for our examples and for our learning, who upon whom the end of the age is come. Romans 15, 4. And he said, in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7, Hebrews 13, 7. Obey them which have ruled over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the results they command. Follow this. When I saw against depth of faith, I said, Lord, I want this. You can't assess the grace you don't crave for. If everybody in this church will tap into the grace of kingdom first that I carry, we will turn the world upside down in no second. Don't no hang it somewhere and be thinking that something will happen someday. Sometime, I know it will happen. If it won't happen, you must do what he says first yes, before it happens. But I see an army, an unbeatable army of people here today. People who will just catch this thing and run with it. It, it will impact all this marital thing. It will impact on it. When, when you are working with God, sir, the devil will have no way to mess you up. You, 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 are, you are far from his territory. Far from his territory. For all my sons and daughters on the line for Miracle Mary, a friend of mine asked me, Brother David, let's start praying for life partner. I said, I don't need it. He said, what do you mean? I said, my own is covered in Matthew 633. My own is covered where? Matthew 633. Matthew 633 covers my own. As I'm doing that one, it's adding other things to me. I, I knew how much it covers then. Come on now. The story of our marriage will look like fake because is it real? Can people live like that forever? It, it, are you sure they are telling the truth? I've not prayed one day prayer on, oh God, let this marriage work. Somebody's soul is changing. Amen. If that's you, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. When you are in love with God, he shows you what others may never see. Amen. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what I have in store for them that love me, but I've revealed it to them that love me. For my spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God, and he reveals them to them that love me. When you are in love with God, he reveals deep, deep things to you. Deep, deep things to you. And that's where you are entering into. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we are in a revival, and so we are talking revival here. I decree that your spirit man catches this fire today. And let God have his place, you will never lose your place. What is a revival? A revival is a move of the spirit across people of all age groups culminating in supernatural turnarounds. He said, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your handmaidens. Everybody's covered. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Shall come to pass after what I pour of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants and upon the handmaidens, in those who shall I pour my spirit, and I will show wonders in heaven. All age groups covered. All age groups covered. No one is left out. No one will be left out in this revival. Can I hear your amen? amen?
I noted something here. In case anyone cannot go out after souls by reason of age, schedule of work, or other reasons, anyone can go up in prayers for souls to be saved, souls to be preserved, the church to stay alive, the world to keep flowing on the earth. And God who sees your labor in secret and the impact thereof will reward you openly. The ones who plant and the ones who water, they are entitled to equal order of rewards. Equal, equal, equal. The quality of the seed of standing, if there's no water, it will die. So when some are on the go planting the good news, others are on the prayer altar praying up for the input to yield maximum harvest. Can I hear your amen? amen? So everybody's covered. Everybody's covered. And I was eight, four years old and serving God with prayer and fasting. Luke chapter 2 verse 37. Abraham was 114 years old when he said, let's go up to worship. Amen. Amen. So, every age is covered. There is room for everyone on the prayer altar. The young, the old. I mean, everybody. But where one's heart is will determine where his time will be. Wherever a man's treasure is, there his heart will be also. No one shall be left behind in this revival. In the name of Jesus. Everything will keep turning in your favor supernaturally. A revival is also a move of the spirit that unleashes the spirit of prayer and supplication upon God's people, resulting in mass salvation of souls, an explosive church growth, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6, 26, he said, the spirit itself helpeth our infirmity. There's a spirit of God, the spirit of God that helps us in prayers. For we know not what to should pray as we ought to, but the spirit itself, the spirit, capital S, make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. There is help from heaven. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, it causes the spirit of prayer and supplication. I will pour the spirit of prayer and supplication upon the people. So there's a spirit of prayer and supplication. Many will return from here today with that spirit upon their life. Yeah. So that behind your closet, you are breaking forth on every side, advancing the kingdom of God. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Remember? Before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered from a man child. Who has had such a, such a thing? As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. So we can bat children through prayers. Paul the apostle said, my children, for whom I traveled and bath again until Christ be formed in you. Galatians 4.19. So we can bat souls into the kingdom through prayers. And that's what we need to do. When is a revival set to occur? One, when praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight, a delight, not a burden, a delight, a delight. You, you take pleasure in it. You are not under pressure to do it. You are not being coerced to do it. It flows out of you. We just repackage our prayer bulletins and make them tatty tatty only and you find them on the net. Personal awakening, spiritual awakening, uh, supernatural church growth, intercessory prayers for the word of life from the altar, uh, fruitful outreaches and all that stuff. Check it out and just engage. They are ready to go prayer points. Engage and see yourself on God's side. Can I hear your amen? amen. Say pray without season. 
when it's a revival set to occur, when one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved, then a revival has taken place in that man's life. When self gets out of the way, when God's purpose rules your mind, rules your heart, then you are in a revival. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. The life of everyone engaging in a revival is supernaturally transformed. You are not struggling. God is just changing your story as he said he would do. It's just changing. Revive that work of God in the midst of the year. I will show up and make you feel like I can speak. Get you up upon your high places. You engage, then you leave him to do it. That's part of the blessings that is in there for us in a revival. Supernatural transformation of our lives. Our needs are supernaturally met in a revival. When I sent you without post or script or shoes, lack the anything, and they said nothing. Lack disappears when you are working with God. You are working with God and working the interest of his kingdom. He gets you on his payroll. Supernaturally, you have been, your, your needs have been met. You don't carry a title, but you are connected to God. It's your turn. Amen. Today is a covenant day of marital breakthrough, and I think we already had it. If you will care to make serving God, your priority for living, he will grant you rest round about. It's not a joke. It's not God trying to... And don't think that your problem is special. It's not special. Don't give them to special ignorance. Your problem is not special. Sir. There's no problem under heaven. There's no solution in this book. Come unto me, you deliver and a heavy lady. I'll give you rest. Come and learn the way to rest. And you find rest for your soul. It's not come and cry, come and learn, come and learn. Come and learn the way to finding the rest you are looking for, and you find it. Come and learn it, and you find it. From scripture to understand that most marital challenges and crises are raw oppressions of the devil. But many victims may not even be aware of this. In Psalm 68 and verse 6, it is the Lord that sets the solitary in families and brings out them which are bound with chains. Bound with chains. He brings them out. They are bound with chains. But the rebellious do in the drive. Land. Those who won't care to do what he says to do to get out of that chains, and they just stay there for life. They just stay there for life. So there are invisible forces behind the trauma in marriages. I mean, we have other issues, but <laughs> that's core. So that has no counseling solution. It takes word encounter and word application to deal with them. They are works of darkness. It takes light from God's word to come out of them. Did you not so go into their fear as he grown tears? An enemy has done this. Why men slept? His enemy came and so tears. Why men slept? May you be awake today. Yeah. May you be awake to righteousness. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. The good news is every child of God that so desires has the God-given heritage to be settled in marriage. 
It is God who said, it's not good for a man to be alone. I'll make life better for him by giving him an helpmate. So it's God's agenda. Genesis 2, 17 and 18. And I find that your wife and a good thing is obtain favor from God. And every child of God is a child of favor. Every child of God is ordained for favor. That we can pass the righteous about with favor as with a shield. We are God's righteousness after we are saved. And we are walking in this world. And then favor is a right. Psalm 5 and verse 12. That includes marriage. We are also told marriage is a good thing from that Genesis chapter 2. It's not good for man to be alone. I'll, I'll settle him down in marriage. And every good thing is our entitlement in Christ, including a fulfilled married life. Matthew 17, 11. If your father fathers know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will God give good things to them that ask him? So God is committed to give every good thing that we may lack to us when we demand for it. Can I hear your amen? Yes. The young, young lions suffer want and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You are going after God. Good things are bound to go after you. You are going after God. Goodness and mercy are compared to come after you. So, today, everyone missing out till now by satanic manipulations on marital breakthrough your case is settled. Yeah. All that are set, set for marriage this year under this prophetic service, the yoke and chains of marital delays, they are declared broken. Yeah. For by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Under this prophetic unction, you are coming out of that siege finally. Yeah. Furthermore, to calm the storms in every challenged marriage, we should take note of the following. Wherever any marriage has no sure foundation in Christ, the individuals must ask God for forgiveness through genuine repentance if they must experience times of refreshing in their marriage. Marriage is only honorable when the bed is not defied. When the bed is defied, the honor is gone. Amen. Praise God. The honor is gone. There is no saying God cannot forgive, but there is no saying he will forgive until man repents. Repentance is a must to secure forgiveness. So most crises come up from that foundation. In Acts chapter 3, verse 19, the Bible says, Acts 3, 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and then the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. It will only be blotted out upon repentance. As long as it's there, trouble is there. The times of ignorance, God has winged that, but now commands everyone everywhere to repent. It was done in ignorance, but now repent. You want to be free from the plague of it, repent. For if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Nothing. Psalm 11 verse 3. Number two, everyone's going through marital challenges to seek for light from the word of God and through anointed books of marriage by proven authors. Seek for light. Light is the master of darkness any day, any time, anywhere. Daniel said in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, and I, Daniel, understood by books. He was a man heavily gifted. 
with wisdom. He said, but I understood by books. I understood through books. I understood through books. Paul was advising in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show yourself a unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You don't want to be ashamed. Get. Seek a word solution to the challenge you are confronted with. Seek a word solution to the challenge you are confronted with. You must have heard me share before. I read eight books on marriage. Eight books before we were married. Eight books on marriage. Eight books. Finding what is it. What, does it, what, what makes it work? How do you sustain it working? People, what you don't look for, you can't find. Look for it. There are many going through marital tension today. I've never read one book on marriage in their life. Never. But they go from place to place, pray for me, pray over me, pray under me. Now, what prayer can you pray for a student who will not study to succeed? Come on now. What prayer can you pray for a student who will not study to, to, to succeed? Exam is next week and he's traveling from one bush to another looking for native doctors to do something for him. What will they do for you? To remind you what you have not studied? No. People are looking for nonsense. I've said it before, humorously. Can I pray for you now to become a pilot? They say, now you're a pilot. And then you buy a uniform, you went to the airport. The airport police will catch you. No. There are things to settle down to find. You can't have the key to a door and be frustrated to have it open. If you have the key, you have the authority. You need the key, sir. You need the key. God showed me seven keys that makes marriage work. And I said, I'm set for heat free marriage. Not just mere tongue. The discovery I've made was the force behind that utterance. Mm -hmm. And it's working now. Yes, that was November 81. This is 2023. Mm -hmm. It's still working. Hallelujah. You better sit down. Sit down. This ministry is not just working because uh, God called. He's called many people and nothing is working. I read 39 biographies of Various ministries across St. Tewis to find out how they did it, where they missed it so I can avoid it, where they got it so I can get it. Life, life is about light. Light, light, light. Life has no meaning without light. Light has no meaning without light. Don't settle down with issues. There is a world solution to every situation of life. There's a world solution to every situation of life. You'll not be stranded anymore in your life. Yeah. You'll not be stranded anymore in your life. Yeah. Because when the enemy shall come in like a flood, it is the light at work in you that will put him off. I'll pray for you now. Satan, leave that family. He said, yes, I agree. Because I say so. And after, I, after you leave, they say, okay, he has left now. It's me and you. You better wake up. Sun is breaking for this morning. Yeah. Every devil hanging around your family life, they have no choice but leave this morning. Yeah. Because by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet, was he, was he preserved? Every force behind the tension in your home, wherever they may be hidden, wherever the arrow is coming from, they return back to send that today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's not enough to assess the light. We must be committed to walking in the light. Light is sweet, but the value is only made manifest by walking in it. Okay, go to the pool called Silo. Light. Now, whether you now went there or not, it's always tell me the outcome. He went and washed and came back saying. So it's not enough to have the light. There must be a commitment to walking in the light. It's not enough. You know. 
I got the light on prosperity, it came to me live. I mean, God spoke clearly from this Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. And I committed myself from there to walk in it. And I've not backed out up till now. And I'm amazed at the results. Amazed forever. I got the light on church growth. 1984, the month of March. And committed myself to keep walking in it. And it's working. It's working every day. In the precious name of Jesus, the grace to be committed to walking in the light that makes all the difference. Receive it right now. Yes. There are many things you have written down in your notes. They can turn your life around a thousand times, but you didn't do anything about it. No. No one goes forward without taking steps. No one goes forward sitting down. Once you arise, you can't shine. You arise with the truth, then it begins to shine. You begin to shine in your journey. Arise, not sit down. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Now, as we close, there are fundamental rules that guarantees peace in the home. They don't appear modern. <laughs> but they are still working. Rebellion against the covenant of fulfilled marriage can keep any marriage under tension for life. Your own will not be under tension. Yeah. The tension will be over this morning. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 to 25. For the husband is the head of the wife. Ah. Even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. That statement will be fought by many people. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So it's two ways. You are not the heir to bully the home. Bully your wife. To love your wife as Christ loves the church. That's a lot. You want peace? Look at it. Clean. The problem is people wait for the other partner to fulfill his own Lord before I do my own. No. If you have found it and you believe in it, commit to it. It will impart on the other party in no time. In no time, sir. God is doing a thing, new thing in your life. Another syndrome today in the world which needs to be addressed right now before we pray is the fact that the Bible said that they too shall become one flesh. I'm yet to meet a half human being on the street up till now in my few days of being on the earth. And they too shall be what? One flesh. There's a syndrome today, and I know it's a manipulation of the devil, that puts a man in Canada 
his wife in Australia. You just give place to the devil to massacre the, ma the marriage. The devil enters in and just continues to mess up everybody. It's not biblical. It's not. The reason is not, no matter the reasons. No matter the reasons. Many have walked away like that from their marriages. Many. They are going to train the children away. Away forever. And they too shall become one flesh. There is no new generation truth. Mm -mm. Yes, truth is truth. Yes, Take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. Take it or leave it. I've seen many, many challenged families today. You know, I'm a pastor and I've been a pastor for some time. Many went out, they returned alone. They returned alone. Marriage is over. Some went from one thing or another, and that was the end of it. Do you want rest? Line up with scriptures. Do you want a future? Line up with scriptures. Line up with scriptures to create the future you desire. Line up with scriptures to create the future you desire. Line up with scriptures. There are also a lot of people in the body of Christ today, the children that are unruly, they send them abroad. They are unruly under their roof. Under their roof, sir. They, they send them out. One came to me recently. The boy was in a sorry case. Sorry case. I said, how well behaved was he before he left? He said, no. That's why we sent him out. Ah. Was off. Off. Train a child in the way that he should go. And when he's grown, he will not depart from it. You leave your dating of children to somebody else, you have lost it. Train up a child in the way that he should go. I hope that some people are getting what I'm talking about. I'm talking from the standpoint of scriptures and from practical experience of rest. Rest, genuine rest, total rest. By lining up with scriptures, total rest. You won't miss it. Amen. You won't miss it. Amen. No matter how successful a man may be, if your children are a concern, your success has no meaning. Your success has no meaning. It has no meaning. It has no meaning. It has no meaning. May your son not come back from wherever he went with another man and say, this is my wife. <laughs> May your daughter not return from a journey and bring another lady and say, this is my husband. <laughs> you better wake up. It's not just any man. It's taking responsibility. T take responsibility. A child that won't hear you at home, will he hear you from abroad? And some still think today, because the way the black man thinks is funny, that traveling is an achievement. Traveling zero is not an achievement. No. We've got it more done in five years that have not been asked to, uh, have not been allowed to travel by the Lord, by the Lord, than we ever go before. There is nothing in it. Settle down to locate God's purpose and line up with it. Can I hear your amen? amen. Settle down to locate God's purpose and line up with it. And line up with it. And line up with it. Somebody's story is changing. Amen. For anyone that may have challenged sons or daughters. Anywhere around the world, I decree their rescue today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Some are not even able to ask, which child do you go to their, to their sons and daughters? They can't ask. Was he going to show when they were here? 
And then you are witnessing like that. Settle down. Rescue your family. Take responsibility. Can't ask what you are going. You are not following up. You are just uh, you know, petting. That's not the way to live. May this revival time terminate every area of failure yeah. in anyone's life. Yeah. Lift up your right hand, everybody. Give thanks to God. God shall calm every storm in every marriage here represented in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is your day of escape. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Amen. You are here in this service. Peace begins with giving room to the Prince of Peace in your heart. Jesus is his name. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives given unto you. Be not afraid, neither be you dismayed. It's the fountain of peace which creates the platform for God to walk for us, to walk and intervene in our affairs. The Lord shall fight for you and you hold your peace. You want divine intervention? Then you need the peace of God that will create the platform for God to walk. And that begins with salvation. Amen. For the kingdom of God is not in meat, but in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace. I'd like to pray with you this morning. You want to turn your life over to Jesus? and experience the peace from heaven that passes all understanding, which creates a platform for God to intervene in your affairs, secure your soul for eternity, and make you an overcomer in the world of challenges. Wherever you are this morning, stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, save my soul this morning, stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. God bless you and God bless you. Many more are getting up. Wherever you are, get up on your feet. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Now, there are also people here that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. You have been one leg in and one leg out, and you know it. There's a disconnect between you and your Heavenly Father. You want to reconnect back to Him. You want to dedicate your life back to Him and come back on to the main flow. Wherever you are, stand to your feet also. Jesus, I'm dedicating my life to you today. Please stand. Now, everybody standing both for the first and second call, please stop filling those forms for now. Bow your heads for prayers. And lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Everybody, say after me, Lord Jesus, save my soul. I repent of my sins today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. To deliver me from the power of sin. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe I am now saved. I'm born again. I'm a new creature. I'm restored back to the faith. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Now be blessed in the name of Jesus. I cover each one of us here with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against us as source of the wicked one. You made this race to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please get seated. Complete your forms and pass them on.
to the church officials around with you. And secondly, very importantly, please, there's a card given to you there. We love you card. Take that card after this service to any of the new converse tent. We have them across the various main entrances. And then the church has some gift items for you. You submit that card, you get your gift items. They will help you a lot. And don't forget about the Believer's Foundation class. It's for your good. It's for your uh, solid foundation in the faith. I will keep you going all your days in Jesus' name. Now stand to your feet. We have the online option, but you are advised to go for the real life option. It will help you touch the thing we are saying in a more pragmatic way in the name of Jesus. Now, listen to this. I am the Lord that confirmed the words of my servant and performs the counsel of my messengers. Many people in this church are experiencing each free marriage as a lifestyle. Today, you are being listed in that group. The trauma in your home is declared over. Yeah. Every challenged spouse is liberated today. Yeah. Every form of addiction tormenting any family and any party in a marriage, that addiction is caused from the roots. Yeah. Every cause responsible for marital delays, the causes are declared broken. Yeah. Everyone bound with chains maritally is declared liberated. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the mystery of Matthew 33 will sort you out eternally. Yeah. As you choose to make God your priority for living and interest of his kingdom, your enviable destiny is declared restored. Yeah. The days of mockery are over in your life. Yeah. The days of mockery are over in your family. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I decree that today marks the dawning of a new day in your own life. Yeah. Every winner on the line for marriage we are in June. I declare you settled this year. Yeah. God will bring your own flesh, yeah. your own bone, yeah. to you this year. Yeah. And to the shame of the devil, you'll be colorfully settled in marriage. For all those whose sons and daughters are overset for marriage, I decree the same grace goes forth as we stand in the gap for them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every spiritual infirmity that may have taken hold of any spouse in any marriage or any of your sons and daughters I decree the breaking of that siege in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The Lord said to me, Behold, I've touched your tongue with the coal of fire. And from henceforth, as you say it, you will say, For everyone who believes the Lord and believes in this prophet, your case is declared settled. Yeah. Between now and next Sunday, you will share your marital breakthrough testimony. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Lift up your hands and give God thanks. in every home. Yeah. Peace over every life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Father. May this week be a most fruitful week for each one of us. Yeah. May your input and impact in advancing the kingdom, be re reckoned with in heaven this week. Yeah. May your time on the prayer altar lead many to salvation. Yeah. May your engagement in your prayer closet see many preserved in the faith. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Look at me. If you crave for this little grace that I carry, so God will multiply it in your life. If you will care to crave for it, if, if you crave for it, if you genuinely crave for it, it's also it on this side. If you see me still running after so still now, there must be something there. There must be something there. Biological growth is enough to keep us growing for life. Number of children born in this church every, every month. Amen. No. We are on a rescue mission. What are we, sir? A lady called Tuesday this week, about to commit suicide. Age 27. Jesus rescued her. She has bought the poison. But by the prayer of the saints, somehow, she called to ask for prayer before she would die. The call center is not for fun. It's a rescue line. I was in the marketplace, and someone about to commit suicide had my son on the megaphone and came in. And as soon as he came, I just said exactly what his problem was. Hey, who told you my problem? He turned his life over to Christ. He called the same day. I was rescued from the grave. So we are on a rescue mission. Carry a rescue mentality. A rescue mentality. You see a brother or a sister going wayward. Sit and stand in the place of prayer. No, this one will not go. No, this will not happen. You are there. You are on a rescue mission to the world. All that saved with fear. Blocking them out of fire. Blocking them out of fire. We are on a rescue mission, not a church growth craze. We are primarily on a rescue mission. Primarily on a rescue mission, uh, carry that mentality. Now, we have had over 31,000 people, new reg newly registered members this year. Why don't you stand in the place of prayer for them to be established in the faith? They feel they form themselves. Membership form, they feel. So we stand in the place of prayer so that they will not snatch them away from the kingdom. We, you have enough to pray for. Yes, sir. Enough. Young men, you have so many souls are on the street. You don't need to travel. Around your office where you are, after closing, in your neighborhood where you live, they're all there. You don't need to take a journey to anywhere. In the precious name of Jesus, this week must be a week with a difference. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. Also this week, we are, uh, there will be some public holiday this week. We are going to use that to fill up our clouds. And when your cloud is full, your rain will fall. When your cloud is full, your rain will fall. Your rain of fearful favor will start falling. Yeah. As you fill your cloud, God will be changing your level again. Yeah. Lift up your two hands, everybody, and give God thanks. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Give him praise. No one like our God. Celebrate him.
Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do. If you came after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering and be blessed as you do so. The flyer for next Sunday is available. Encounter with Destiny Service. You pick up copies and use them to advertise Jesus. Be blessed as you do so. All of our new converts, please be sure to stop at the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. You will see the 10 branded new convert tents. You get there, drop the we love you card you have been given and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you for your edification. If you want to share your testimony in the second service, please get to any one of the major entrances to the tabernacle. Our pastors are waiting right there to document your testimonies. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, choir. I 
Somebody excited to be in God's presence on this last Sunday of the month of June. Will you give Jesus a big, big hand of praise and a shout of hallelujah? Please, you may be seated in his presence. We shall be taking our call to worship from the book of Psalm chapter 114. And we're reading responsively from verse 1 to verse 8. I will take verse 1, we take verse 2, and we keep alternating that way until we get to verse 8, which we'll read together loud and clear. Psalm 114 and verse 1. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange language, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven by. The mountains skip like rams, the little hills like lambs. What ailed thee, O thou sea, that thou fledest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Ye mountains that ye skip like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Verse 8, loud and clear. Which turn the rock, which turn the rock into a standing water and the flint to a fountain of water. Let's take verse 8 again loud and clear. Which turn the rock into a standing water and the flint into a fountain of water. You are welcome. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Please, let's listen to the Faith Tabernacle announcement in this second service. Number one, praise the Lord. Be reminded that we are in the midst of the year prophetic season. Daily prayer and gospel raids hold throughout this season. Note that the daily prayer holds in designated zones across Lagos and Ota. The time is 8 to 9.30 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, except on Wednesday evenings. It is a platform to ensure that all our senior citizens, the aged, nursing mothers, partake of this kingdom advancement endeavor. Remember, there is a place for everyone in a revival. Your place shall not be taken by another in this revival season. A loud and resounding amen. amen. Number two, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that the Faith Tabernacle 24-hour Global Rescue Call Center is still in operation. This platform is set up for prayers, counseling, information on events, and general inquiries. The call center number is plus 234-7080-638000. Number three, Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday both here in Canaan land and in all our designated locations across Lagos and Otta. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number four, praise the Lord. Christ commanded that we share our testimonies as we saw in the cleansing of the ten lepers. How he questions, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Only the one that returned had his healing perfected. Therefore, Share your testimonies with us, and they shall not only be perfected, they shall be preserved and multiplied. Send your testimonies to testimonies at Number five, praise the Lord. 
Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members host tomorrow Monday. This takes place live at all of our BFC centers across Lagos, Otter, and Environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Note that this can only be taken... Note that... This can also be taken online at bfc.lfcww.org. Number six, praise the Lord. Midweek communion service holds this coming Wednesday, both here in Canaan Land and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos or Tan Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number seven, Winners at Life Fellowship, our house to house fellowship holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Otta. Remember that we shall be praying for one another, inviting a board to partake in this fellowship time. Don't miss this for anything. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Number eight, recommended books of the month authored by Bishop David Oedipo includes Finding Revival Fire, The Winning, The Wisdom That Works. Walking in wisdom, conquering controlling powers, walking in the newness of life, and all you need to have all your needs met. In the service, it is testimony time. Please let's welcome Mr. and Mrs. Alawoda Raymond as they come to share their testimony. Mr. and Mrs. Alawoda Raymond as they come to share their testimony. Let's take the concluding part of the announcement. Number nine, next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our encounter with destiny service. Are you clapping for Jesus? It shall be our prophetic entrance to the month of July. Come expecting an encounter with the prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. We shall be holding four services. The times are 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Church, put those hands together for the Lord. Shout hallelujah. In this service, it is testimony time. Please come forward and share your testimony. Your name and straight to the point what the Lord has done. Okay, we are Raymond and Vivian Alaude. We want to give God all the glory for delivering us from the siege of barrenness. We got married in 2015, and since then we have been praying and believing God for the fruit of the womb. Several medical examinations were conducted on us over the years, and they confirmed that nothing was wrong with us. We also did some other procedures, including IVF, but they all failed. In January 2022, we joined this commission fully as a family. My wife was here, I was in another place, but we had to join this commission to engage together and participated in the 21 days fasted and prayer. During one of the services, Bishop declared, no one will now will remain barren before Shiloh 2022. We received the word. On the covenant day of fruitfulness in 2022, Bishop declared again, no one will now shall remain barren before Shiloh 2002. We also kept serving God by praying kingdom advancement prayers, praying for the needs of others, our barren friends, and also participating in all the outreaches in 2022. Then God showed up. In July 2022, we went to the hospital because my wife was having intense stomach ache. And when the test result came out, they did everything. She was confirmed six weeks pregnant. And in March 2023, she delivered a baby boy named Victor Oluwa Shegun Awaju Ashegunlo. We return all the glory to God for of the God of this commission for giving us this victory in the year of more than a conqueror. Shout hallelujah! Seven years barrenness destroyed via kingdom engagement. Let's put those hands together for Jesus. Let's celebrate him. Please listen to this. Uh, documented testimonies, and you shall be blessed. Life transformation after quitting illegal business. (laughs) 
I want to testify of what the Lord has done in my life since I came in contact with this church. I am a businessman who used to deal in illegal business. But the day I came in contact with this church, I decided not, I decided to repent of my sins and give up that business because I received the word of life from this church on godliness. After I gave my life to Christ, I did not want to offend God again. So, I gave up that business. Since then, God just transformed my life and opened doors of business breakthroughs for me. Let's make it bigger for Jesus. With this fire ignited in me, I went home to minister to my parents who had never received Christ before. Glory be to God, now they have received Christ in their lives. Let's celebrate Jesus. I give God all the glory. The testifier is Okonko C. Your testimony is the next. Next is good news. Today is the last Sunday in the month of June, and I know that God has done you well. Do I have a witness in the house? Say, so, me, God has done me well, oh. Therefore, right now, it's time for end of month special Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication. Give the Lord a big, big clap open. Beginning from today, that's how you'll be clapping for the God in your life. <laughs> Therefore, shortly, we all shall be upstanding. The choir shall be leading us in high praises. We shall be having in front of the altar here the children and the marriages that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication. Each and every one of us, we have many things to give thanks to God for. Therefore, if you have space, you can come to the front of the altar. If not, wherever you may be together. We shall be rejoicing and returning all the glory to God who is too faithful to fail. Our anchor scripture shall be from Psalm 106 and verse 1. Psalm 106 and verse 1. The Bible says, praise ye the Lord. Psalm 106 and verse 1, please. Psalm 106 and verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is what? For his mercy endured for how long? Say, so, me, God is good to me. Please rise up on your feet right now. Take your thanksgiving and dedication seat along in your hand. Let's have the people already listed in front here and the choir lead us in high praises. Praise God, choir. Peace, kind God. I'll never see your time.
Let somebody shout the loudest hallelujah. Please bow your heads and lift up your voice wherever you may be. Give God thanks personally. Let him hear your voice of thanksgiving and appreciation. You and I are beneficiaries of God's mercy. Let's thank him now. Let's thank him now. Let's praise him now. Glorify his name. Let him hear your voice. Thank him in your own language. Let's give room to those who are carrying small babies, please, to find their way closer to the altar so they can be easily anointed. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Take all the praise. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Heavenly Father, we have returned today according to your commandment to give you thanks because you have been good to us. We are beneficiaries of your mercy. Lord, accept our thanksgiving. Today we thank you for the babies, the children that are brought to your house. They are your gift. They are your heritage. Therefore, as they are brought today and they have been anointed, let them be set apart. Let your hand of goodness and mercy rest upon them. In this season of glory, let them not know shame. Let them be sources of joy to their parents Amen. and to the body of Christ. Amen. We use them today as they have been anointed as point of contact for the release of many more miracle babies. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you today, Father, for the marriages that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication. Only you can take a man and a woman and make them one. Therefore, we pray for these marriages that they shall be joyful. Amen. That they shall be fruitful. And Lord, that they shall live long together. Amen. Especially on this Sunday when it's a covenant marital settlement day. Let them enjoy a sweet home. Amen. For others among us believing you for miracle marriages, Father, today make it the idea of settlement. Amen. Each and every one of us standing here today thanking you for various blessings upon our lives. Lord, every good in our lives, you are the source. Therefore, accept our thanksgiving. Yes. For the gift of life, we thank you. Yes. For the salvation of our souls, we thank you. Yes. For various deliverances, we thank you. Yes. For breakthroughs on all fronts, we thank you. Yes. For bad days, we thank you. Yes. For anniversaries, we thank you. Yes. For divine protection, we thank you. For miracle houses, miracle jobs, miracle vehicles, Lord, we thank you. Whatsoever your people are standing here today thanking you for, Lord, let them never be turned to sorrow. Whatever we are thanking you for today, let it continue to be multiplied. Let the shout of joy continue to be in our habitation. This same time next month, we all will have many reasons to give thanks to God. And you shall not be missing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for accepting our thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please take your thanksgiving and dedication seed. Wave it unto the Lord. Present it yourself. And thank him and bless him and glorify his name. This thanksgiving seed is declared blessed and acceptable and multiplied back and miracle full. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Lord and believing, amen. amen. Would you wave your hands to the Lord and say, My Father, I thank you. Again, the loudest, My Father, I thank you. Amen. A believing and loudest, amen. amen. The choir again shall be leading us in high praises. Please make sure your children are word anointed. Drop your thanksgiving and dedication seed. Together, let's keep rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Choir. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Glory, glory, we praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, you are. And the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Halle, halle, hallelujah. 
give the Lord a big hand and a shout of Hosanna. You may please be seated. Today it is my privilege to welcome some special people into this service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle, may I ask that you please stand up on your feet again in God's presence and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. Shall all winners give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a big clap offering for these precious people he has brought into his presence. While you are standing, the welcome package along with a card will be given to you to fill in the course of this welcome. A special welcome package with a card will be handed over to you to fill in the course of this welcome. Once you have received it, please you may take your seat. You have received a special welcome package. Please you may take your seat and begin to fill it in the course of this welcome. I want to especially welcome you on the behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church universal. And his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedekbo. But what is unique about this church? This church is ordained the house of liberation by divine mandate, where God stops the tears of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, where God terminates all oppressions of the devil and confers breakthroughs on all members as they believe. God has not confirmed to confirm, he has not ceased to confirm his word since this mandate was delivered over four decades ago. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive from the altar, the next three months, the Lord will bless you openly as he did to Obedidom. I want to welcome you today to this breakthrough family. And may today be your entry into realms of unstoppable breakthroughs that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say to you this morning, welcome home. May I please ask again that all our first-time worshipers, please stand on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. We want to pray for you. I want to release God's blessing upon your life. Please rise up again as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all our precious first-time worshipers. No man can come except the Father draws them. You've drawn them to this tabernacle today because you have an interest in them. Lord, we ask that whatsoever reason you brought them here for be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. For those who are here to know you as your Lord and Savior, yet to have a personal relationship with you, may today be their day of salvation. May anyone that may have come in here under any form of marital crisis or tension, this day, may that tension and crisis be put to an end. Every other area of life that may be a concern, may today release the solution to them. May the keys of the kingdom that they need to progress and walk fervently in this kingdom be delivered to them today. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Please, you may be seated. Remember to submit your forms to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome. Let's give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a hand. In this service this morning, it is offering time. Can we declare it loud and clear, my blessing time. Let's quickly put together every seed we have brought in honor of Jesus in this second service. And that includes our regular worship offering for Sundays, our tithes, and every other financial obligation we have with God. Be reminded you can give via cash or checks, and you are issuing a check, you can do that in favor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land, and you can also take advantage of our various electronic giving platforms. You'll find them displayed right now on the screen. As we get set to honor the Lord in this second service, Psalms 96 and verse 8. Psalms 96 and verse 8. The scripture declares, Give unto the Lord the glory that is due to his name. Psalm 96 and verse 8. Bring an offering and come into his courts. You are set to honor the Lord this morning. Please join me, rise on your feet. Lift up those seats of worship this morning and present them to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Appreciate him this morning for the privilege he has granted to you and I to appear in his presence with a seed in our hands. Present those seeds 
from the depth of your heart this morning, thanking God for his diverse blessings upon your life and upon your family. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. With our seats yet lifted. Heavenly Father, again on this last Sunday in the month of June 2023, we are all gathered here worshiping you with a seed in our hands. Lord, we declare that every seed presented this morning be acceptable before you. For every tighter, we declare that the windows of heaven continually remain opened. You will never cease to rebuke the devourer for our sakes. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone giving one seed or the other, let it be acceptable today. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Someone can say it yet louder. Amen. Please be comfortably seated. We cast our seats with joy as the Faith Tabernacle Choir ministers. Oh, 
everyone. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven? Lord, grant me an encounter with your word of fire this morning. Let your word become like fire shot up in my bones that will keep me in motion in pursuit of you and the interest of your kingdom. Let your word become like a shining and a burning light. A burning and a shining light in my heart today. And thank you for this. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we are all here. Jesus, our eyes are on you. Grant each one of us today an encounter of a lifetime. Yeah. Let no one return 
without a definite touch from your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I once said this, be committed to note taking and not note writing. You might have a message of one hour and you have four key things that God is saying, go work on these and watch what I do with your life. That is note taking, note taking, note taking. In the precious name of Jesus, today will be a day you will not forget in a hurry. Yeah. Certain truth will strike a chord in your own heart today. Yeah. I also stated severally that one encounter with God through his word is worth much more than a lifetime of efforts. One encounter, one genuine encounter, one genuine encounter with God through his word is worth much more than a lifetime of labor, a lifetime of effort, a lifetime of celebration of skill and strength. Today, that kind of encounter, you will have it here. Thank you, Jesus. Every marital trauma shall be over here today. Every siege of marital delay shall be over here today. Someone came in from Benin. There were 11 ladies in that family. None was married. But God broke through and came true for them. That same year, five of them were married. And others on the line. The siege was lifted. Today, every marital siege from a generational cost platform of diabolical siege shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Every source of Tension shall be rooted out. Yeah. Every family shall be released into a brand new world of refreshing. Yeah. Everyone set for marriage this year in the winner's family. Many of the time, this service right now, and others in other services, and whosoever we are con connected from anywhere, the year. 2023 is declared your year of marital settlement. And so shall it be. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. Part 4, the last in the series for our Sunday services. This subject connotes that blessings, tangible blessings, undeniable blessings accompany every revival. Testimonies of dramatic change of stories are natural occurrences in a revival. Among others, a revival provides a platform for every interested believer to engage with God and the interests of his kingdom. It's a season of spiritual labor in advancing the kingdom of God. And if they obey and serve him, among other things, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Job 36 and verse 11. 
So a revival is not a give me, give me season. It's serving God to commit him to meeting all our needs. God will meet, supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. When you seek the Lord, you shall not want any good thing. So the Bible time is a time of panting after God and the interest of his kingdom. Panting after God and the things that please God. And a commitment to advance in his kingdom. That commits God. To meet all our needs. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things which your heavenly father knows that you need shall be added to you. There are things we need, we don't even know we need them, but they are added to you. So by way of preamble, a choice to serve God is a choice for all round rest in a world of unrest. Some will argue to you forever that there's no such thing like all round rest. Because they have not proved what makes it a reality. So to them it's not real. Every truth of God must first be proved before it commands proofs. Prove me now with your tithe. If I will not open to you the windows of heaven, prove me. You don't prove me, you can't have the proofs. <laughs> the taste of the puddy is in the eating. You don't prove my word, it can't generate proofs in your life. So all around rest is God's agenda, even though we live in a world of unrest, in a world of unrest, but God, God has an agenda of all round rest for his people. And what is it that gives access to that? A choice to serve God in truth and in deed, not lip service, not eye service, is our access to a world of all unrest in a world of unrest. Second Chronicles 15, 12. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath. It's not, it's not forced on them. For they have sworn with all their heart, and they have sought him with the whole of their desire, and he was fond of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. That's the realm you are going into. <laughs> rest at home, rest at work, Rest in your business. Rest over your children. Rest over your health. All round rest. Rest over your spiritual life. All round rest. Now, mind you, in verse 15, they did that with the whole of their desire. No ulterior motive. Whole of their desire. And he was fond of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. Many have made covenants several times, but it's not coming from the required depth. So it's made today and thrown to the trash can tomorrow. It's not from there. When I wrote that covenant in 1976, all my heart, can I tell you this, all my life, 
will stick to it. All my life will stick to it. It hasn't left me and I've not left it. I saw about 760 souls saved this last week. It hasn't left me. I've not left it. And God has not stopped doing what he said he would do. Now, can I tell you, let's stop harassing God. Until we do what he says to do, we cannot commit him to do what he says he will do. We cannot commit him, sir. <laughs> All these things will be added to me. He hasn't stopped adding them to me. Sir, I have never begged. 76 till date. I've never borrowed. Ah! I've not always handled. No. But I've never lacked. Second Yamo, Atene Tekotlam Prekutana. Stop thinking you can use the prayer altar to harass God. In those days when we were growing up, we used to bombard the gates of heaven. God must open it. You must open it today. God, where are you? You must open this. You will be laughing at our ignorance. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. You won't beg him to do what he says he will do. Just do your part, sir. Do your part. Let me say something that may harass some people here. I've never prayed for money. Since he showed me the key, I just kept engaging the key and he kept fulfilling his word. Except for young converts, that's why we pray over our offerings. Yeah, we don't need to. Thank you, Jesus. I'm giving this offering according to your word. Amen. Thank we we. Things we beg. Righteous people are not ordained to beg. I've been young and old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken. No, I see begging bread. You know, begging God is also begging. You know? Begging is not about who you beg. It's the act of begging. The act of begging is what to make a beggar. It's not that you're on the street and saying, give me money. <laughs> begging God is begging. <laughs> Can I hear, say with me, begging God is begging. Begging God is begging. He said, if you will hearken to my voice, observe to do what I tell you to do, I will set you on high. You won't beg me. You won't pray for it above all nations. You are going somewhere. Amen. You are going somewhere. Amen. It was a covenant to serve God that brought them to the realm of all unrest. So today, if you care for it, because it's the word of God and it lives and abides forever. <laughs> It lives and abides forever. He will give you also rest. Amen. There are many in this commission today who are operating in the realm of all round rest. Not that they don't have issues, but they are at rest in the midst of the storm and God takes over. Can I hear your amen? amen. A choice to serve God is a choice for blessings. In the place of struggles, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless. He shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. You shall not be barren, nor cast your young in the land. The number of your days I will fulfill. Can I tell you this? There is no woman called barren or man called impotent who will go through this year without a divine visitation yeah. after the order of Sarah yeah. and you bring forth your miracle. Yeah. Thou shalt serve, I shall bless, and when God blesses, who can cause? He said, I will bless them that bless thee and him that causes you, I will cause. When God blesses, he protects and secures the blessings. When you are blessed through serving God, forget about the devil. He said, I will take care of every devil and every agent of the devil. Forget about them. They are non-issues. How shall I cause whom God has not caused? And how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Numbers chapter 23 and verse 8 and then verse 20. 
I've received a commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. No hired native doctor can reverse God's blessings. In your life. When it is God who blesses you, forget about the devil. In the name of Jesus, you are entering the realm of irreversible blessing today. You will not know ups and downs in your life anymore. In the name of Jesus. Number three, no one can make God first in his life and misses his enviable place in destiny. If you will care to make God first in your life, your enviable destiny on earth is secured. Elijah said to the widow of Zarephath, make for me first, and he did. And the pot of flour never got exhausted. The cruise of oil never failed. All through the days of famine, all through, she was the envy of that season. She was the only one shining. Everybody was looking haggard and tattered. God first made that the envy of her world. Seek you first, the kingdom of God. Man, you have heard about the glory of Solomon. Ah. <laughs> Greater dimension of glory than Solomon's experience becomes your portion. That's what he said. All these things that others are dying to get shall be yours. You won't look for it. They'll be added to you. It's your turn at last. <laughs> so stay awake in this revival season and receive grace to stay awake the remaining days of your life. 70, 60 date. By grace, I'm awake. Oh. I'm awake. Amen. If the thing follow me now, after this service, I'll still go out. And I'm not forced to. There's nobody supervising me. I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm crying with them. Praise God. Hallelujah. For what? For their rescue. In the name of Jesus, no one here will miss out in this season. Yeah. The crown ordained for you in this season, another man will not have. Yeah. Another man will not take it. Yeah. Another man will not take it. Yeah. Never mind where you are now, Joseph's case was worse. He was a slave, then a convict. My God. And God catapulted him to the palace. We serve a God of dramat dramatic turnaround. Some people will find themselves where they least imagine before this year is over. Something will just strike from heaven and then there you are, swan in the skies. Just do what he says and leave him to bring to pass what he says he will do. Leave him. Leave him. You belong to a global ministry, you will not die in a corner. <laughs> for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Will do anything that God says, no matter how uncomfortable it may be to them. And will serve his purpose. All things will keep working together for their good. It's a world where some things work and many other things won't work. But God said all things, all things, family things, business things, all things, health and vitality, all things, peace of mind, all things. Triumphant children, all things. Glorious grandchildren, all things. All things working together for good to them that love God. That's your new realm. <laughs> no aspect of your life will be branded a failed aspect. <laughs> and then he said, eyes have not seen or ears have heard. What God has in store for them that love him. So you just become a living wonder 
a surprise to everybody, including yourself. That's what happens. But when God is out of the equation in one's life, frustration sets in. You will not suffer frustration. The foolish man says there is no God. They are corrupt. Nothing good comes out of their lives. Psalm 14 verse 1. You know why? The wise shall inherit the glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. So they are changing story from shame to shame. The other ones are changing story from glory to glory. Shame to shame, shame to shame, no end. That's not you. You won't be found there. When God is out of the equation in a man's life, frustration sets in. Frustration is the stepping stone to depression. Depression is the stepping stone to devastation. That's where suicidal thoughts come in. You will not suffer frustration. As you allow God to be in the central equation of your life, central equation. Someone asked me years ago, Brother David, do you ever have problems? I said, maybe it came I didn't know. Maybe it came I didn't know. I'm on a journey, and the one I'm working with is real. Can I hear your amen? <laughs> why, why is that frustration? Without me, you can do nothing. Now you have let me out. Let me see what you can do. John 15, numbers 5. By such shall no man prevail. Let me see how much of your skill can make room for you. But a genuine heart for God and the interest of his kingdom is the anchor of every great destiny in the kingdom. And we are people of equal destiny. Every child of God shares an equal destiny in Christ. As many as he predestinated, he called. As many as he called, he justified. As many as he justified, he equally glorified. So we, we are people of equal destiny. It's no respect of persons. It's our standing with God that determines what defines our destiny. No one will miss it here. <laughs> Paul was a sold out man for Christ. And they said concerning him, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Jesus I know. Paul, and he was sharing the same platform in the realm of the spirit with Christ. Every great destiny answers to a genuine heart for God. When God occupies the central stage of a man's life, all things begin to work together for his good. All things. And that's you. That's you. <laughs> when God and eternal kingdom becomes our priority for living, we step into realms of fearful favor. Come and say fearful favor. <laughs> favor that causes men around you to tremble, including kings of the earth. Including what? Kings of the earth. There are persons that are central discussion points in governmental circles. They are businessmen, they are business women, but they occupy some strategic place that has a lot to do with the state. Can I hear your amen? There are individuals that are not in business, but where they stand, authorities recognize that they are there. And that you be careful. As strong as a lion is, he knows what to be careful with. He knows. He sees a herd of buffaloes. He did like this. No, go forbid. Because he has not gathered enough strength that can attack them. And there's no lion under heaven that can invade a herd of buffaloes. He will trample him. They will trap when the buffalo takes a lion with his horn, he throws him about six meters up. When he lands, the back is broken. They will just be like this. Somebody's story is changing. <laughs> what am I saying this morning? Allow God to occupy a central place of your life. You'll be in command of things. Things will be answered to you on their own accord. Your days of struggles are over. 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 
your days of struggles are over. Yes. One of us here had the challenge, family life, and the husband has left for nine years. They have done everything, family meetings here and there, nothing worked. She began to engage with Matthew 63. And after one service on Sunday, he called the husband who has said, never forever. Can you come and pick me in church? He said, I'm coming. That was the end of the trauma. Somebody will hear good news today. In Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. The time to favor you is here. Amen. Now, it's a for thy servants take pleasure in the matters of your kingdom. They take pleasure in the stones of Zion. They favor the very dust thereof. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and not the ends of the earth or the kings of the earth, their glory. Fearful favor in response for you favoring the matters of the kingdom with all your heart and with the whole of your desire. Fearful favor attends to you. That's what happens. Favor is not free. It's in response to touching the heart of God. Favor comes our way by touching the heart of God by where we stand and what we do. You won't miss out of favor anymore in your life. <laughs> now listen, to be without God in this world is to be without hope, which is a breeding ground for depression. Ephesians 2 and verse 12. To be without God is to be without hope. We are still looking at when you take God out of the equation of your life, frustration sets in. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world, you don't have hope without God. You don't have hope, you have depression. But First Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Christ has begotten us to a lively hope. Lively hope. Being begotten, I mean, has begotten us again unto a lively hope. When you are in Christ, your hope comes alive. Hope of a future and hope of eternity. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 4. To him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Because a living dog is better than a dead lion. A living dog. That's why some heavy people are depressed. They are gasping. They are on oxygen max. And yet, they have things. But they lack God. They have things. But they lack God. They have things. But they lack God. Most of them have all kinds of junks in their bedroom, in their bedroom, because they have no hope of a tomorrow. This is one delicate part of this. You are either with God or you are all from God. You can't be in between. How long will you hold between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If he be bad, follow him. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. You can't be on two sides at the same time. And so he said, I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. The choice is yours. Choose life. A choice to serve God makes a man a living wonder. Everyone's lot is a function of his choice. May we keep choosing right in, our, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is a revival? Very quickly, we've been trying to define that all along. One, a revival is a move of the spirit across people of all age groups culminating in diverse supernatural turnaround. The functional word there is all age groups, 
everyone has a place in a revival. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall do dreams. And then your young men shall see visions. And I will show wonders in heaven. That's a revival. In the last days, I put my spirit upon all flesh. A move of the spirit has a place for all groups of people. All people, people of all age groups. People of all age groups. So it's not just about people going out for so many. There's a place for everyone in a revival. In case you cannot go out by reason of age, schedule of duty, or any other reason that one may have, you can pray up. You share the same order of rewards. You can pray up. Praying for souls to be saved, praying for them to be preserved, praying for church, for church growth, praying for members who are challenged, you can pray up. And God who sees you in secret has vowed to reward you in the open. We don't only serve God by going out, we serve God also by praying up. We serve God also by praying up. Anna was serving God in, with fastings and prayers at the age of 84. Luke chapter 2 and verse 37. Serving God, serving God. So all that determines what we do with our time is where our heart is. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If you believe that is a commandment of scriptures that's ordained for your change of story, you will invest in it. You will invest in it. You will invest in it. Some are going out. They are still praying up. So they're having double things coming their way. Amen. If you do two jobs, you get paid for, from two jobs. You get paid from two jobs. But to do nothing is to get nothing. So get involved. Make a choice. And graduate your choice to a covenant. It will be a triumphant adventure for you. A triumphant adventure. Now, these last days, people are only begging God to get things. We'll be so frustrated. Because my covenant will not break. We have moved from the age of promises to the age of covenant. There's a shift in the world, in the realm of the spirit. There's a shift right now. There's a shift right now. And we are privileged to be among the people leading that shift. There's a shift from the realm of promises to the realm of covenant. Until you do what I tell you to do, God is saying, you can't commit me to do what I say I will do. You cannot commit me, no matter the method you want to use. No matter how many people you gather together to pray. You cannot come, because the scriptures cannot be broken. Because they cannot be broken. When you are a child, you cry for anything and they give it to you. As an adult, you just cry on your own. Nobody cares. You cry, you cry for what? They say, I need transportation. Transport yourself. Amen. You must know what to do to get yourself out from one place to another because you are grown enough. The church of Christ is growing towards the coming of the Lord. So we must begin to take responsibility. No one will be left out. You will not be left out. You will not be left out. You will not be left out. A revival season is a time of the unleashing of the spirit of grace and supplication for effectual, fervent prayer. And anything spiritual, you have to demand for it. Amen. He said, honestly covet the best gifts. Don't watch your prayer life go down the drain. Seek the outpouring of the spirit of grace and supplication to renew your prayer altar. Zechariah chapter 10, chapter 12, verse 10. I will call upon them the spirit of prayer and supplication. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The spirit himself helps our infirmity in prayer. So let's go cry out for the outpouring of the spirit of prayer and supplication to help our weaknesses in prayers. So we can begin to pray effectual, fervent prayer that avails much. Something is breaking forth in your life. You will pray many people into the kingdom this time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's what's happening. And so a revival said to call, when praying kingdom advancement prayer, becomes a delight. I pray that will happen in everyone's life this time. 
that praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a natural delight. I've had several prayer episodes in my life on the mountain, under the rain, here and there. But I cannot remember one where I went to ask for my thing. Oh Lord, it's time to do this thing for me. I can't remember. I can't remember. What's next, Jesus, to be done? Amen. I'll tell you one interesting story. A doctor tested me one time. He said, oh, your blood pressure is high. I said, no, mind." And I went to have a nap. I was dreaming of the next crusade. Hallelujah. What is it? Next, next crusade. crusade. That's how the thing went to where it came from. Uh, because it was in my heart. So to dream it's very simple. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. What the man was saying didn't apply to me. What applies to me is this one. Mm. This next meeting. So, something's breaking forth in your life. Amen. Now, I might look wicked, but I know what I'm doing. My wife was dying, and I was on the field. 27 nations. He busied me up, so I won't even have time for it. And he went behind. He wanted to test where my heart is. That's where my heart is. He went and did what he said he would do. Things always go well for those on the go for Christ. Things always what? Go well. Always go well for those on the go for Christ. He takes care of their things. From now, you won't struggle with anything in your life anymore. Yeah. Things always, he said, when I sent you without pause or script or shoes lucky anything, they said nothing. Things always go well for those who are genuinely on the go for Christ, either on the go after souls or going up on the altar of prayer. Things always go well for them. From this time, things will keep going well for you. Can I hear your loudest, amen? 1984, we were believing God for 3,000 naira to pay off the church renter in Kaduna. And I called a number of our leaders, about six of us. I said, now that we're all at the same level. Because if I have this money, God won't appeal to me to give it. Now that we're all at the same level, understand what I'm saying. Because the time is coming, some of us will take off in the air. Yeah, we don't even know what they're using. So let me tell you what I'm using before that time. I'm sold out to God. Sir, you can't be sold out to God in truth and not become the envy of your world. You can't be sold out to God in truth and not become the envy of your world. You cannot be sold out to God in truth and not become the envy of your world. Your life cannot become a seed that will not bless a generation. When your life becomes a seed, your generation will be blessed by it. When you dedicate yourself selflessly unto God, my God, your life keeps going even after you are gone. In the precious name of Jesus, nobody will fake his stewardship with God anymore. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Today shall be the dawning of a new day for you. Today shall be the dawning of a new day for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So when he says pray without ceasing, he's not asking you to be praying for needs every day. Pray without ceasing. Is for your own sustainable transformation. Prayer does not only change things, it changes people. When you're on the altar of prayer, your life is being upgraded. Your spiritual life is being upgraded. As Jesus prayed, the fashion of his continent was altered. His robes, his garments were white and glistening. My God, a transformation. So it doesn't only change people. Moses came back from the altar and they couldn't look at his face. He has been transfigured. He has been transfigured. So it's a platform for our transfiguration, continuous spiritual change of level. Amen. No more begging. The dignity of redemption will keep manifesting in your life. When one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved, then it's in a revival. Amen. It will work for you. Yeah. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the power of God, to salvation to everyone that believes. And we saw the glory that came after that. 
What's in a revival for us? The life of every engaging believer is transformed in a revival. Your life will experience a dramatic change. <laughs> Ten men shall hold this to the scale of it as a Jew say, we will go with you. We can see the glory of God in your life. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Many will come to know Jesus by just watching you. They will come to your door and say, we'll go to church with you this coming Sunday. They come to your door on Wednesday and say, we are going to your fellowship this Wednesday because of the glory of God that's upon you. He said, all nations shall see thy righteousness. All. You shall be called by a new name with the mouth of the Lord shall name. So in a revival, you just receive a new name. A new name. Ah, he used to be a beggar here. We don't see him anymore. God has changed his story. He used to be sickly, but he's now on the street, jumping up and down. God has changed your story. No matter where you are now, that's not where you'll be by the end of this midst of the year. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Every move of the Spirit confers dominion on every engaging believer. He gave them power. Luke chapter 9 verse 1. He gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And they went forth in verse 6 and preached, and men should be saved, healing everywhere. They preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Dominion. 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 He that winners us is wise. And the Bible says, through wisdom, by wisdom kings reign, and princes decree justice. So, wisdom enthrones. When you are on the go with God, he goes with you. Come on now. And he that works with the wise shall be wise. So working with the all-wise God makes you wiser by the day. Makes you wiser by the day. And wisdom is God's mystery behind our enthronement. Wisdom. You saw how wisdom enthroned Joseph? How wisdom enthroned Daniel? Wisdom is the mystery behind the believer's enthronement. And as you keep walking with Jesus, he was walking with them, confirming the world with signs following Praise God. Hallelujah. And he that works with the wise shall be wise. Proverbs 13, 20. So as you get on the go for Jesus, you get wiser by the day. Yes, you get what? You day. get wiser by the day, and that is what we culminate in your enthronement. You get wiser by the day, and that culminates in our enthronement. So don't fake it. Face it. Face it. A genuine walk with Jesus. A genuine walk with Jesus. When I'm going from one location to another, ministering to people, the good news, he keeps shedding more light, more light, more light. Which way to go? Which step to take? Pam, 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 pam. Direct. Life. That leads to enthronement. Paul had this wisdom <laughs> daily from heaven. He was a tireless owner. Tireless owner. And saw how God enthroned him. He's still enthroned him now. So engagement with God in a revival enthrones. By getting those individuals wiser by the day, culminating their enthronement in their various areas of endeavors. That shall be your experience. 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 It's a brand new day. Yeah. It's finally, finally your turn. Yeah. It's finally your turn. Yeah. It's finally your turn. Yeah. I've said the bulk of the things that guarantees and secures marital breakthroughs. It's covered by all round rest. As you make a covenant to serve God, you enter into the realm of all round rest. Can I tell you what that does? The Lord shall fight for you as you hold your peace. 
So when you enter into the realm of all and race, God takes over your battles. And when God takes over your battle, you are a celebrated overcomer. You won't have to fight. They will think you are the one fighting, but you are always winning. Glory to God. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you as long as you hold your peace. When you enter into covenant to serve God, you enter into a realm of all and rest. That means a platform for God to intervene in all matters concerning you, in all matters concerning you, in all matters concerning you. From today, you won't need to struggle to triumph anymore. <laughs> Will your God ever lose a battle? No. So when you create a platform for him to take over your battles, your battles are won. It's a brand new day for you. <laughs> now, behind marital challenges of believers in the kingdom is largely ignorance. What do I call it? What will I have done to my vine that I have not done for it? <laughs> well, I waited for them to bring forth food and they brought forth white grapes. And it ended up in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 13. My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. People are crying for freedom without seeking the truth that sets free. The revelation of the truth equals light. And that light shines in darkness. Darkness can't stop it. So when you find the truth and you are committed to walking in the truth, darkness will clear the way on their own. Darkness will clear the way on their own. Now, let me tell you this. It will help you. 1979, after being intoxicated by the testimony of uh, Smith Wigglesworth, <laughs> I went to that place to minister. I've shared it before. How many of you are witches here? And they stood up. There were too many. I said, sit down. I'm not saying someone is calling you a witch or you know, all that. Are you a practicing witch? Stand up. And so they stood up. And one of them, I said, come on here. What do you do with the devil? He said, anytime we want to suck blood, we get on the highway. I said, oh, when people like us are coming. So when, when we sense a higher power on the way, we clear off the highway. You know the higher power that darkness recognizes? Light. The only power that darkness will bow to is light. So it's not a wish that can stop your man's destiny. If you catch the light that secures it, the light that guarantees it, it will, it will clear the way on its own. Simple. Clear the way. When we said, and I've just caught that fire. That fire was burning inside me. I was looking for any devil to demonstrate it. That I've been seated in heavenly places far about. That's why I could ask that devil, what do you do with the devil? 1979. I was 25 years young. Light. Light does not have to do with age. Light is light. If your toddler goes to turn on the switch, in your house, light will come on. Yes. It's not about age. It's about light. Yes. In the precious name of Jesus, whatever anybody has suffered to ignorance is declared over today. <laughs> the cure for ignorance is revelation. Yes, sir. Revelation. Yes, sir. Revelation. Yes, sir. Revelation. Revelation. And we get that directly from the word and through anointed materials of those who have encountered God with proofs. Anointed materials. Anything you approach on common sense, we only command common results. People are using common sense a lot. Use Bible sense. Engage Bible sense. And you see how things will open up for you. Engage Bible sense from now. There are those who are going through marital trauma. They have never read any book in their life on marriage. Never. They may have bought some, perhaps, but never opened it. They are only chasing the devil. You sit down. Sit down. <laughs> then he's laughing. He's saying, I'm not there. 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 Settle down and go for light. People are going through a challenge. They, they don't look for the way out of it. It won't go on its own. No. It won't go on its own. You better look for the way out. 
So go for books. I read eight books on marriage before we were married. I began to ask questions from the Lord until he answered me. When I got the answer, I knew. And I declared, I'm set for history marriage. God will show you the way out. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. I said, my God will show you the way out. Amen. My God will show you the way out. Amen. My God will show you the way out. Amen. I've been studying church growth since 1985. 85. My core mentor in church growth is Yonggi Cho. 2010, we still bought 400 copies of his books among the pastors to change the story of our cell system, and it happened. Light is sweet. Go for light. It will shatter your bandage. The Bible says, you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And that light shines in darkness, darkness cannot overcome it. The end has come to all forms of marital struggles in your life. The end has come to all forms of marital struggles in your life. For all young people who are set for marriage, I decree this year as a year of marital settlement. I decree this year as a year of marital settlement. God is the one that says it's not good for a man to be alone. I mean, and he cannot deny himself. So it's good to be married, that's the meaning. It's good to be married. And the word said it was, whosoever find the wife find the good thing and has obtained favor from God. Proverbs 18, 22. And every child of God is ordained a child of favor. Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. That we compare the righteous about with favors with a sheep. In Acts chapter 2, verse 46, they were having favor with all the people. New birth entitles us access to the realm of favor. Now, in the precious name of Jesus, for everyone set for marriage, whether your sons or your daughters, wherever they may be, the year is declared your year. Yeah. Just mind their spiritual state. If they get on a rough standing with God, heavens will come down. And if you are here, you get on a right standing with God, heaven will show up. Heaven will show up. This year shall be your year. <laughs> Remember, every good thing is our entitlement in Christ. And God said marriage is a good thing. So it's your entitlement. Matthew 7, 11. If your heavenly father, your earthly father knows how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will God give good things to them that ask him? So it's your right. Every good thing is our right in Christ. And you'll get it. The Bible says the young lion suffer want and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You want to be married? He said, you shall, want, you shall not want it. So the end has come to it. Therefore, for everyone set for marriage, today is declared your day of deliverance. Yeah. And God will set to you supernaturally yeah. in this prophetic service. Yeah. For by a prophet, Hosea 12 and verse 13, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. I speak from this prophetic office today. Every chain holding bound anyone's marital destiny is declared broken. Yeah. Every generational cause holding down anyone's mental destiny is declared broken. Yeah. For your father is the one that sets the solitary in families and brings out them that are bound with chains. Psalm 68 and verse 6. God sets the solitary in families he brings out those that are bound with chains, but the rebellious will dwell in dry land. The obedient will be out. The rebellious will stay inside. May you be listed among the obedient who will enjoy the beauty and the color of marriage. It's so in the name of Jesus. I've round up. If the
foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Here is heaven's verdict. Marriage is honorable in all, provided the bed is undefiled. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. In case it has happened, the way out, simple. If we say we have not sinned when we have sinned, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to rescue us. Cleanse us from all our iniquities. First John chapter 1 and verse 8 to 10. For if the foundation be destroyed, the righteous can do nothing. There is no saying God cannot forgive, but there's no saying we forgive until we repent. Most of the time we are fighting the branches, we have left the root. Let's get back there. They start with small, small things and they begin to enlarge and enlarge and enlarge. Jesus, forgive me. For the time of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands everyone everywhere to repent. God has overlooked. When you repent, he overlooks, he writes up as if it never existed. But until the rest is of the trouble continues, it will be showing off in bits and pieces, bits and pieces. The end has come to do such trauma in your home. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Until we are humble enough to repent, we are not qualified to be forgiven. So settle down, Jesus. Where is this thing coming from? And genuinely repent of them. Take cover under the blood. And then rise it up. It's a brand new day. 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 Now, God has his constitution for the family. If you rebel against it, you can't have peace. You can't have peace. You can read that from Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23 to 30. You find God's constitution that governs the home. They may not look palatable, but that's the only way to go. They may not be palatable, but they are highly profitable. They are highly profitable. They are highly profitable. They may not look palatable, but they are highly profitable. Settle in. Go through that. That's enough all the lecture you need in, in securing a very healthy and refreshing family life. How many women today want to hear why well, submit yourself to your own husband in everything? No. No, now that they don't know the difference between a man and a woman. Every man is not a man. And every man a woman. You, know, you, you can't change these fundamentals. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. You are not in love. And yet you say, why, why is all this crisis? You are the one. You are the one. The maltreatment, the cheatings, the harassment, you are the one. This tongue we are asking to become calm, you are the one. The arrogant wife, you are the one we are talking about. The proud headed husband, you are the one we are talking about. I want to know I'm the head of this family. Nobody's contesting. There's no election. Praise God. Life, life is so simple. Except you are converted and become like little, little children. You can't make it. You have to become little children in the hand of God. In the hand of God. We are talking about the ancient of days. How old are you? How old am I? We are talking about the ancient of days. And I say, why? 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 In the name of Jesus, whatever the source of the trauma in any family is, I command those things exposed. Yeah. And I decree that your part will be duly taken. And an end will come to the storm in your marriage. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. You're on your way somewhere. You are getting there. You are getting there. You are getting there. You are getting there. It's not enough to encounter the light. You must be committed to walking in the light. What makes it work is that you put it to work. Whatever you find in your course of search, you put it to work. And then God comes in to confirm it. God comes. 
he was working with them, not working without them, confirming the word with signs following. So put the word to work, and you get God to work in your behalf. It shall be an awesome time. It shall be an awesome time. No one shall rebel against the truth here. You shall not rebel against the truth here. You shall not rebel against the truth here. He said, thou shalt do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn to the left hand or the right, that you may live, that it may be well with you, that you may prolong your days on the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 32 and 33. Don't turn. Leave it the way it is. You can't change the world. The truth can, cannot be broken. You shall observe therefore to do as the Lord your God has commanded thee. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left that you may live. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has, shown you that, has commanded you that you may live, that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Absolute obedience will put you in command. The end has come to all the troubles in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lift up your right hand and bless the name of the Lord. You are not missing your place. Your enviable destiny is assured. Give him thanks for light. You find the light, give him thanks for it. Give him thanks for it. And give him thanks for it. In Jesus' precious name. I mentioned something in the first service. Before we pray, let me just say a word on it. A marriage and their twin shall become one flesh. Is that in your Bible? Have you ever met a half human being on the street before? Half. Be careful. There's a syndrome today where marriage is now essentially online. Husband in Jamaica, wife in Ghana. What a marriage. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. You gave the place to the devil. So sexual perversion comes in. Trauma everywhere. Marriage broken up. Because you have rebelled against the truth. The reason is not withstanding, my friend. You are not married to the children. I'm married to your husband. All this new generation syndrome, be careful. They are among the misses of iniquity. They are among the misses of iniquity. What money do you have for God's sake? Your wife is staying in one country to be looking at her children at four year old. What year, year? What, what life? I, I'm talking to you as a father. I know what God will not allow, and it's in His word, and you have it in your Bible. What are you doing about? A child or a son is not behaving at home. You understand? Send him abroad. What do you want to get back? A derelict. What are you going to get back? Train up a child in a way that he should go. You are the one to do it. When he's grown old, he will not depart from it. So let's take covenant responsibility, sir. Instead of crying tomorrow, let's take covenant responsibility. May your son not come back home with another boy and call him his wife. <laughs> will your daughter never come home with another lady and call her the husband? You will not weep over any of your children. <laughs> you shall not weep over any of your children. Your ministry shows that there is nothing in going out. If you are sent, good. If you are not sent, you may smell. If you are sent, there is no one dime of American money in this place. No one euro of European money in this place. When you stay where God sends you, he decorates you there. When Paul went to the Jews, he was molested. Stay where you belong. Stay where you belong. Where you belong. Something's breaking forth in your life. Amen. Some are borrowing money to send children abroad. They are borrowing money, borrowing from the bank. They've made their house. They have the only house they have. The only house they have as collateral. For what? You say, what is he going to read? History. History of which one? History of Nigeria or history of what? You have to play 
just invest in things that don't add up. In the name of Jesus, no one here shall be overrun by the syndrome. <laughs> the good news is, you belong to a high-flying commission. Your wings will not be clipped. <laughs> Living apart is a risk. It's a risk of your eternal soul. Don't toy with it. Don't toy with it. I've seen many go out and only one return. Don't toy with it. We have records of numerous divorces. Don't toy with it. We have marriages that stand still. Not married, not unmarried, but the same way. Don't toy with it. In the name of Jesus, today marks the end of all sources of trauma in your married life. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. <laughs> Very quickly now, you are here in this place and you are not born again yet. Jesus is not a magician. The Bible says, the wind blows at least says, and you hear this and you can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Only the born again qualify to operate in the supernatural. Most of our challenges require supernatural intervention for rescue. So be born again. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. He overcomes by faith. But be born again first. Only the living requires breakthroughs. Be born again first. You have the Son of God, you have life. You don't have the Son of God, you don't have life. Be born again first. And other things will follow. If you're in this service this morning, and you know that you know that you know that you're not born again yet, you don't have the fruits of salvation, the proofs of redemption, and you want to have it. It's open, it's free, but it's real. Wherever you are, stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. And then we'll be out of this service. God bless you. God bless you. Keep standing. You want to be saved today. You want a rescue today. You want to qualify to operate in the supernatural today. You want to live the overcomer's life today. Stand to your feet. Wherever you are, God bless you and God bless you. Now, there are also people here. They may stand in place. Who need to dedicate their life to Christ? You want to dedicate your life to Christ today. You know you are once there, but now it's one leg in and one leg out. Let no that man think he shall receive anything from God. You want to come back in full force, back to your Heavenly Father. Stand to your feet also. Stand to your feet also. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. Many more are standing up. It's your turn for a change of story. Praise the Lord. Now, for everyone standing, please bow your heads in a moment for prayers. Bow your heads in a moment for prayer. Stop feeling those sleeps for now. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save my soul. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again to set me free from the power of sin. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I shall serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each one today with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against any further satanic assault on your life. you never draw back into darkness anymore in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Please get seated, complete those slips, and pass them over to the church officials around with you. We'll be glad to be in touch with you. 
but it's important to be reminded of Believers Foundation class. It was every Monday. We have them in hundreds of places across Lagos and Nutter. We will reach you through, uh, through your telephone number via SMS on the location nearest to where you live. And for those who, by reason of their work schedule, cannot make the Monday time, 6 to 7.30 p.m., you can go for the online option as you have it on the screen. But everybody needs a sure foundation to secure the future of his new fan faith. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. God told me, I've taught your tongue with a coal of fire. And from henceforth, as you say it, you will see it. Every blessing proclaimed on you today will be turned to a testimony in your life. Your life will no longer be a trial by error adventure. As you settle with God, in this awesome revival season, it will settle all things concerning your life. <laughs> Many in this church are enjoying heat free marriage. As the Lord lives, you will be added to the list this time. <laughs> God has wrought unbelievable breakthrough in settling people down in marriage. Today, your own is settled. Everybody stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. For all my sons and daughters here, let me tell you something. A friend of mine asked me, Brother David, let's start praying for life partner. I said, I don't need it. My own is covered by Matthew 6, 33. I know the range of what it covers, and I know it's part of it. He covered it all. Covered it. We prayed for him like he requested, and God answered me. Just do what I say. You won't beg me to do what I say. I will do. You have committed me by doing what I say you should do. When you do what I say you should do, you have committed me to confirm what I said I will do. In the precious name of Jesus, as you keep racing after God, your marital destiny will be settled in color. devil shall succeed to close up your marital destiny. Yeah. Every generational cause that might be behind it is today broken. Yeah. The trauma in your family is ended finally today. Yeah. Many separated families will be reunited this week. And it's starting today. Yeah. Many runaway husbands will return home this week. Yeah. Many runaway wives will return back home this week. Yeah. Every wrong in every family shall become right. Yeah. The grace of God will put those things right. Yeah. And you will keep them right. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The good news is, as many as are set for marriage this year, this year is declared your year of marital settlement. Yeah. Every case of threatened divorce is over finally today. Yeah. You won't see that in your children's life. Yeah. You won't see that in your sons or daughters' life. Yeah. In your grandchildren's life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. your family shall become a family of marital breakthroughs. None of your daughters will return home from marriage. Yeah. None of your sons will come back and say, I've sent my wife away. Yeah. I decree all and rest yeah. for you and your household. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. This is your week. By next Sunday, there shall be deluge of testimony. In fact, it's starting from covenant hour of prayers. Things will be happening beginning from this hour. In Jesus' name. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks.
Next Sunday is our encounter with destiny in service. Every destiny that has lost shape and color shall be recovered. There shall be a raw encounter with destiny this coming Sunday. So come prepared for an encounter with God and you'll be glad you did. Invite your friends and your neighbors and particularly your converts. Make sure they come along with you. Jesus is Lord. This week we have two days or something of um, uh, public holiday. The date is not fixed. But whatever day, engage with it to fill up your cloud so your reign of favor can start falling. You will not miss it. Take advantage of every moment available and you see how God will begin to honor your input. Shall we together share the goodness and fellowship? Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the Covenant Highways of Life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do. If you came in after the worship offering, there are officials around the altar and various exits. Carrying late offering tags, you do well to drop your offering and be blessed as you do so. All our new converts, ensure you take the We Love You card you have been given to any of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. Drop the card with the officials and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. Also, if you want to share your testimony in the third service, rush to any of the major entrances. The pastors are waiting right there to document your testimonies. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Choir.
the very last Sunday in the month of June. Lift up your hands and shout a resounding Hosanna. Put those hands together for the Lord and please you may be comfortably seated. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Our call to worship in this third service shall be taken from the book of Psalm chapter number 47. Psalm 47, as our custom is, we shall be reading responsively from the first verse to the last verse. Psalm 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Verse 2, church. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises unto our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the hidden. God seated upon the throne of his holiness. Shall we take verse 9 together loud and clear everybody? The princes of the people are gathered together. Even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. You are welcome. Church, put those hands together for the Lord. Please, let's listen to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for this service. Number one, praise the Lord. Be reminded that we are in the midst of the year prophetic season. Daily prayer and gospel reads holds throughout this season. Know that the daily prayers hold in designated zones across Lagos and Ota. Times is 8 to 9.30 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, except on Wednesday evenings. It is a platform to ensure that all our senior citizens, the aged, nursing mothers, partake of this kingdom advancement endeavor. Remember, there's a place for everyone in the revival. Your place shall not be taken by another in this revival season. Amen. Number two, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that the Faith Tabernacle 24-hour Global Rescue Call Center is in full operation. Put your hands together for Jesus. This platform is set up for prayers, counseling, information on events, and general inquiries. The call center number is plus 234 
7080638000. Number three, Covenant Hour Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday, both here in Kenalan and in all our designated locations across Lagos and Ota. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number four, praise the Lord. Christ commanded that we share our testimonies as we saw in the cleansing of the ten lepers. How he questioned, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Only the one that returned with his healing perfected. Therefore, share your testimony with us and they shall not only be perfected, they shall be preserved and multiplied. Send your testimonies to testimonies at davidoedekboministries.com as shown on the screen. Number five, praise the Lord. Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members hosts tomorrow Monday. This takes place live at all our BFC centers across Lagos, Ota, and Environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Note also that this can also be taken online at bfc.lfcww.org as shown on the screen. Number six, praise the Lord. Midway communion service hold this coming Wednesday, both here in Kenalan and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ota, and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number seven, Winners Satellite Fellowship, our house to house fellowship holds this Saturday at the WSF centers across Lagos and Ota. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time. Don't miss this for anything. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. And number eight, recommended books of the month, authored by Bishop David O. Oyedipo, include Fanning the Revival Fire, The Wisdom That Works, Walking in Wisdom, Conquering Controlling Powers, Walk in the newness of life and all you need to have all your needs met. And finally, number nine, next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our covenant, our encounter with destiny service. It shall be our prophetic entrance to the month of July. Come expecting an encounter with the prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. We shall be holding four services, times 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Please, in this service, it is testimony time. You hear your name? Kindly come out quickly and share your testimony with the brethren. Ayansi Jennifer. Ayansi Jennifer and Dickness Modukbe Teller. Dickness Modukbe Teller and Ayansi Jennifer. Jesus is Lord. Put your blessed hands together for Jesus. In this service is testimony time. Testimony time. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Please come up and share your testimony. Praise the Lord. We are here. We are Mr. and Mrs. Osamo. I'm here to return all the glory to God. For 36 years, my family has been on the marital siege. Like, nobody gets married. If you get married, no, your bride price will never be paid. I joined this commission, and I keep on engaging in kingdom advancement prayer. 2015 Covenant Hour was established. I keep into it. Mama said you need to focus on what God has for you, for you to get married. I keep on engaging. Papa emphasized on giving. I keep on giving. And to the glory of God, I prayed. God gave me a word in Isaiah 45, 11. He said, ask me anything concerning my son. And I will tell it to you. I keep asking God. Uh, people keep coming. I, I will hear no, but I will ask God why. And all of a sudden, God told me last year, you already know your husband since you were born. You were just being ignorant of it. And God gave me my husband. We've known ever since I was born. We've always talked. We've always chatted. 
but I was just being blind to it and we got married this year. Bright price fully paid. We are not owing. I've come to return all glory to God. Praise the Lord. Your own testimony will be next. Please come up and share your testimony. What the Lord has done in two minutes. Praise the Lord. I've come to return all the glory to God that is too faithful to fail. I'm here to say there is reward in service. For the past 17 years, we've been believing God for the fruit of the womb. We kept on serving, both at the zonal level, at the district level, at the provincial level, everywhere, even here in Kenya land. At the time, the enemy came in with depression. And I said, no, I've come to serve God and there is reward in service. I could remember vividly August 11, when we were planning for the new ordinance. The Lord, when we got to um, Rajioba, the Lord said to me, turn around. I'm turning your situation around. The person talking with me they didn't know. I just turned around. He said, turn again, I turned. And that was it. Everybody was just saying congratulations, not knowing that I wasn't pregnant at that time. But by the end of that month, confirmation came. All through the pregnancy, I kept on serving, even at the time of delivery. After the delivery, the enemy came in. But the Lord said to me, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, that his spirit will raise up a standard. Different, different complications. But today, I am not in the mortuary. I am alive to return the glory unto the Lord and to tell everyone that Oluwa told me sin, Oluwa Shindara, God is too faithful to fail. To him alone behold the glory. Somebody praise the Lord. Ten years marriage siege ended and 17 years barrenness was destroyed. Your own testimony shall be greater today. I think the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords deserves a bigger hand clap for all of those amazing testimonies. Praise the Lord. As our custom is, it is that time we'll be returning at the end of the month to give God praise for what he has done. Has God been good to you and I this month? If God has been good to you, raise your hand and shout, Thank you, Jesus. Very shortly, we'll be asking that we rise on our feet and begin to dance and celebrate God for what he has done. But please make sure you package your thanksgiving seed. This is not our worship offering. This is our end of the month thanksgiving seed. Whatever it is that God has done for you and I deserves our response of thanksgiving. In Luke's gospel, chapter 17, verse 17, all the way to 19, when that leper saw that he was cleansed, he returned with a loud voice and glorified the Lord. To every act of God, there is a demand of our response. And you and I will be returning today to say, thank you, Lord, for you are the doer of all these great things. Will you join me, please? Let's rise on our feet at this moment. We'll be having those who are dedicating their children first that will come all the way around the altar. And then marriages, anniversaries, that are taking place, marriage anniversaries, marriages that took place this month, you will follow after. And then every other one that has any specific reason to thank the Lord. Healings, deliverances, open doors, birthdays, uh, blessings of all sorts. As long as there's room, you will have the room, the opportunity to come forward. Now, are we ready to thank him? Is everybody on your feet? Now, let the choir lead us in a session of thanksgiving praise as we welcome those who are ready to dedicate their children first and others follow thereby. Let's praise him.
reasons to thank the Lord. Now let's lift up our voices and first and foremost, give him the glory, give him the praise. Give him the honor for all he has done in your life and be very specific. He's coming through for you within the month of June. Give him praise. Give him glory. Father, we honor you. I thank you as an individual for coming through, for showing up. Father, I give you the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Now we decree that all of these children are hereby dedicated. As the oil comes upon their head, we decree that this is a seal of exemption upon them. Every one of these children shall be great. We decree that each one of them will live to fulfill their days. Now that this mark of exemption has come upon them, greatness now becomes their identity. Each one of these children shall end up being greater than their parents. The grace of God that is at work upon this commission also rests upon each one of these children. They will never struggle to see good things in life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we decree that everywhere the soul of their feet shall tread upon as they are dedicated today, it is delivered to them. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. We also decree that every marriage that took place this month and those that are having their marriage anniversaries, we decree that this home shall remain rock solid. Every one of these marriages, there shall be no delay with children. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we decree that these marriages and these homes will remain peaceful homes. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. Now, would you please lift up your thanksgiving seed? You'll know why you are thanking him. You'll know why you return with a loud voice. And once again, lift up your voice and present your thanksgiving seed. Lord, I thank you for the healings of the month. I thank you for the exemption. I thank you for turning things around in my favor. I give you praise. I'm not paying for it. I am just grateful for it. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified in Jesus precious name we have given thanks to everything lifted up we decree that this seed is declared blessed anything you are now thanking God for by this time next month it has doubled in the mighty name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus precious name amen and amen please make sure you drop your thanksgiving seed as you dance all the way back to your seats the choir will be leading us in Jesus name let's praise him
Let's give Jesus a bigger, bigger hand of praise this morning. And you may please be comfortably seated. Today, it is my privilege to welcome some very special people worshiping with us for the first time. If today is your first time worshiping here at Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday morning like this, please kindly rise on your feet and remain standing all across the tabernacle this morning. Today is your first time. Please rise on your feet. Church, let's give them a big hand. Let's give them a big hand as they rise everywhere. Amen. A welcome package along with a card will be given to you by the officials beside you. As soon as you receive your own copy of the welcome package and a card, you may please be comfortably seated. Our officials will place in your hand a welcome package and a card for you to fill. As soon as you receive your copy, please be comfortably seated. I want to welcome you especially on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church universal, and his servant, the apostle over this great commission, Bishop David Oyeriko. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God a mountain of divine intervention, where every issue that has the first solution can be supernaturally perfected. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over four decades, surprising members of this church with unimaginable testimonies, even as they believe. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as a day to Obedidom. Church, let's say sound amen. amen. Since God is no respecter of persons, expect a turn around God to visit you also upon this mountain as you believe. I want to welcome you today to this turnaround family. And may today be your entry into the realms of divine intervention that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say to you, welcome home. Church, let's give the Lord a big hand. May I at this point request all our first-time worshipers to suspend filling those cards and rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Kindly suspend filling those cards, rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Kindly rise on your feet. Please bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, again this morning, we thank you for these precious ones you have brought to worship with us today, even in this service. We acknowledge that no one can come except the Father draws them. You drew them here to bless them. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare your blessing over every first-time worshiper today. If they left any issue of concern back home before coming, upon their return, let such issues be converted to open testimonies. And if there be any one of them that is not yet born again, yet to have an encounter with you, let the visitation in this service mark their own salvation. By all means, let every first-time worshiper return with their own open testimonies. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Let's say it louder. Amen. Please be comfortably seated. Complete filling those cards and pass them to the officials beside you. One more time, you are welcome. God richly bless you. Church, let's make that clap bigger for the Lord. Can somebody shout the loudest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now in this service, it's offering time. So shall it be for us all in Jesus' name. Therefore, quickly and properly, honorably package all your financial commitments that you have made between you and the Almighty God. That includes your tithe 10% of God's increases upon your life, your worship seed for this service, and any other kind of seed you have brought. Please label them properly. And please be reminded of the various forms of giving. You can give in cash. If you are writing check, do so in honor of faith, tabernacle, Canaan land. 
You can take advantage of any of our electronic event platforms. Please check the screen. You'll find information required. And that can also be done by transfers. Praise God. I said praise God. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10 shall be our anchor scripture as we give unto God right now. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. The Bible says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Verse 10. As we do that, it says, Thy bands shall be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That's overflowing blessing. In the midst of lack and want, your case and my case shall be different. Please rise upon your feet, take your seat in your hand, with joy in your heart, and gratitude unto God. Lift up your seat, present it, glorify his name, worship his majesty. Speak to your seat right now. Speak to your seat and water it as you present it, as you honor God, as you praise him and bless him. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seat lifted. Father, in Jesus' name, in obedience to your command, we have come with financial seed in our hands to worship you. Lord, let our seed be acceptable. Amen. To every giver today, according to your word, let this offering bring an end to every form of financial suffering. Amen. And launch every giver into the realm of overflowing blessing. Amen. This hand shall never beg again. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Louder and believing, amen. amen. You may please take your seat comfortably. Cast your seat with joy. And let's welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir to minister. Of your praise, no man can know the end of your Lord. No man can see the end of your glory. No man can know the end of your power. No man can see the end of your praise. No man can know the end of your Lord.
Hallelujah. Lift your hand to heaven, everybody, and let's give glory to the unlimited God this morning. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him all the adoration. Celebrate him from the depth of your heart this morning. Father, we say thank you. We bless your name. We glorify you. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Bless his name this morning. What a privilege to be in his presence on the last Sunday of this month of June. Lord, we have come to give you the praise. Are you giving him thanks this morning? Let your voice be lifted. Let your hands be lifted. And glorify him from the depth of your heart. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Now begin to ask him to speak directly to you this morning. I've come here for an encounter with you. Speak directly. Speak expressly. Speak clearly to me today. By your word. I have come, O Lord, for an encounter with your word. I have come, O Lord. To be transformed by your word. Pray from the depth of your heart. Remember it's our covenant of marital breakthroughs. So you can be specific in your expectation. Tell God exactly what you desire to experience. Every marital siege must be broken. Marital favor must be delivered. Turn around the marriages must be experienced. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Father thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for the privilege and the blessing that you have given us to be in your presence. Lord, we thank you for causing us to see the last Sunday in this month of June. That is the last Sunday in the first half of this year. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And Lord, this morning our eyes are fixed upon you. We ask that you will speak directly to each one of us. By your word, let every one of our lives be transformed. You have called this a covenant of marital breakthroughs. Therefore, let every marital siege be broken today. 
Let marital favor be delivered today. Let turnarounds be granted in various marriages. In the name of Jesus Christ, let every secret tear be wiped away. We thank you because we know it's done already. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated in his presence. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Our line of teaching for our Sunday services this month has been understanding the blessedness of a revival. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. And i like us to have these thoughts that will guide our entrance into the subject of the day. God's servant told us in the first two services, everyone's lot in life is a function of his choice. Everyone's lot in life is a function of his choice. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, I place before you life and death, blessings and curses. He said, choose life that you may live. A wise man once said that you make decisions and then your decisions make you. What becomes of every destiny is the outcome of that individual's decisions. But we must understand that a choice to serve the living God is one that is left to you and I to make. We decide whom we serve. Jo Joshua chapter 25 and verse 15. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. What does this choice to serve the living God connote? It is a choice to serve God, or a choice, sorry, for all-round rest in a world of unrest. When you choose to serve God, you are making a choice for all-round rest in a world of unrest. 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 12 to 15, verse 15 in particular, after they took the covenant to serve God, the word of God said, God give them rest round about and we live in a very tumultuous world where rest is required and that rest comes to you and I as we choose to serve God. Secondly, that choice is a choice for freedom in the place of bondage. Serving God is our access to liberty, true liberty from every one of the manifestations of the enemy. It is through serving God that we get free from it. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 16, the Bible paints a picture through this woman who had been bound by the devil for 18 years. And look at what Jesus said. He said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? She was a daughter of Abraham, yet she was kept in bondage. But those who serve God have dominion over the bondages of the enemy. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Who are the you that he was talking about there? In verse 1 and 2, he said, He sent 70, appointed 70 also, and sent them two by two in this before his face to all the places where he would come. So the you he was talking about were the individuals who were on the go for him. As we serve God, we are empowered by God to stamp or trample upon every one of the bondages of the enemy. The good news for somebody hearing my voice this morning is that whatever the bondage of the enemy may be, from this season onward, that bondage is broken. What does the choice to serve the living God connote? It's a choice for blessing. In the place of struggles. A choice for blessing. 
in the place of struggles. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. Job 36 and verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So our commitment to serve God positions us to enjoy rest, positions us to enjoy liberty from bondage, positions us to enjoy blessing in the place of causes. It terminates our struggles and brings us into realms of liberty. I see every struggle in any life today being terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. But when God is out of the equation of one's life, frustration sets in. When God is out of the equation of one's life, frustration sets in. This is so important. That is why the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 14 and verse 1. Psalm 14 and verse 1. Look at what it says to us there. It said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The fool said in his heart. So where God is out of the equation, man is left as foolish. Man is left as foolish. So it, it, it brings man to a realm of frustration when God is out of the picture. My prayer is that for each one of us, God will never be out of the picture of our lives. But when God occupies the central stage of a man's life, all things begin to work together for his good. Everything. You can't frustrate a man who has God at the center of his life. You can't, you can't orchestrate that man's downfall. As long as God is at the center of a man's life, that man becomes an unstoppable entity because everything is forced to work together for his good. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. The Bible says, All things work together for good to them that love God and to them that accord according to his purpose. So every genuine lover of God who has God at the center of his heart that individual enjoys everything working together for his good. Shout hallelujah. From this day, everything will work together for your good. If you believe it, say loud amen. And that is why when God and the interest of his kingdom becomes one's priority for living, he steps into favor with God. And this dimension of favor is not just ordinary favor, but what the Bible calls fearful favor. Fearful favor. Psalm chapter 102 verse 13 down to verse 15. The Bible tells us there, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the said time is come. He said, For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and they favor the dust thereof. He said, therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. So there is a dimension of favor that will cause the heathen to fear. Fearful order of favor. And that favor comes as a result of serving God and the interests of his kingdom. When that becomes the lifestyle of an individual, you begin to enjoy dangerous dimensions of favor. That's what the Bible also calls high favor. The Bible describing what came upon the woman Mary. It said, thou art highly favored. It is a favor that cannot come from man. It can only come from above. It is superior to what any man can give. It can only come from God. I pray this morning that that dimension of fearful favor, the favor that will cause the heathens to fear, the favor that will cause the kings to begin to celebrate the name of our God, that favor will begin to answer on your behalf. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. I said somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. But like we have heard before, favor is not free. Favor is procured or entreated via our engagement in the advancement of the kingdom of God. Favor is not free. It is entreated by our engagement 
in the advancement of the kingdom of God. In Psalm 45 verse 12, it says, The rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. Psalm 119 and verse 58, he said, I've entreated thy favor. So we entreat favor. Psalm 119 and verse 58. We entreat favor and we do that by engaging in the advancement of the kingdom of God. Shout hallelujah. It's important to know that to be without God is to be without hope. To be without God is to be without hope. And that is the breeding ground for depression. When God is out of the equation, hope is out of place. But when God is there, when God is the center of your life, when God is the center of your heart, at every point in time, your hope is renewed. That's what the Bible said concerning Abraham. He said, he, he said against hope, he believed in hope. There's a dimension where no matter what is happening, your hope is consistently alive. Look at the testimony that we heard today of that our dickness that stood upon this altar. 17 years of barrenness. And yet, it seemed as if the devil was trying to whisper to her an opportunity for depression. She said, it's as if depression wanted to set in. But I said, no, I am serving God. I am serving God. Keeping God at the center kept depression away. When God is at the center of a man's life, a woman's life, that individual maintains hope. And to him that enjoys such hope, the Bible makes us to understand that that hope will bring forth a testimony. For somebody hearing my voice this morning, your hope is bringing forth your testimony. I said your hope is bringing forth your testimony. Your hope is bringing forth your testimony. And that means that each one of us must make a choice. You can't be on both sides. You must, make it, you must take a sign. You must make a choice to serve God. That choice is to be made by each one as an individual. No one can make it on behalf of the other. Husband cannot make the choice for the wife. Wife cannot make the choice for the husband. Each one must make the choice for themselves as it concerns our commitment to serving God. And I pray that each one of us today will be empowered to make the right choice. In the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly this morning, what is a revival? What is a revival? Let's look at a few things quickly. Number one, a revival is a move of the spirit across people of all ages, culminating in diverse supernatural turnarounds. It is a move of the spirit across people of all ages, culminating in diverse supernatural turnarounds. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 29. Look at what the Bible tells us here. Joel 2, 28 and 29. It tells us there, it says, it will come to pass, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. It will be all flesh. It says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And verse 29, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. This scripture shows us that the outpouring of the spirit, which represents the quickening of revival, it says it accommodates people of all generations. So there is no age bracket that is exempted. Children, young adults, adults, the elderly, no matter your stage or phase in life, there is a place for every believer in a revival. There is a place for every believer in a revival. There is a place for every believer in a revival. This is so important. Just this week on Wednesday, one of our zona ministers called me and he said, Pastor, um, there is one of us who is celebrating her 86th birthday. And she was in the morning prayer raid. But before he could look around to get to her, she had already left the raid. So he ran out to go and find her because he said, Pastor, I just want you to pray for her. It's her birthday today. And he ran out to find her. Where was she? Standing already on the roadside distributing flyers. There is a place for everybody. And he said, Pastor, every day she is there, morning prayer, evening prayer. Or she said she may, not, she may not be able to say much to those. She takes her flyers and what she can't say with her mouth, she has said already on the altar of prayer. She takes her flyers and just begins to give them one by one. Take this one, take this one, take this one, take this one. At the age of 86, 
there is a place for everyone in a revival. There is a place. Maybe you are unable to go out, perhaps because of your engagement or your age or stage in life. You can go up in prayer. There's a place for everyone in a revival. Don't relegate yourself out. A revival accommodates people of all ages and it provokes supernatural turnaround for those who engage. Number two, a revival is a move of the Spirit of God that unleashes the spirit of prayer and supplication upon God's people, resulting in mass salvation of souls and explosive church growth. It is a move of the Spirit of God that unleashes the spirit of prayer and supplication upon God's people. So in a revival, there is the quickening of the spirit of prayer, the quickening of the spirit of supplication. In the book of Zechariah chapter, chapter 12 and verse 10, the Bible tells us there, it said, I will pour upon the house of David the spirit of, of grace and supplication. So there is an engracement to pray that comes upon the lives of God's people in the season of revival. I pray that for each one of us this morning, that grace for fervent prayer, for consistent prayer, for zealous prayer, for steadfast prayer, I see that grace coming afresh upon each one of us. Your prayer life and my prayer life shall never be docile again. Your prayer altar and my prayer altar shall remain on fire forever. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. That's what happened in the book of Zechariah chapter, chapter 8. And from verse 20 down to verse 22, look at what the Bible tells us there. It says there, it says that thus said the Lord, it will come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. And verse 21, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. And verse 22, yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray, and to pray. There will be such active and fervent prayer as an outcome of the move of God in these last days. So what God is showing to you and I is that the season of revival is the season of fervent prayers where we stand on the altar of prayer and begin to engage heaven for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And the result of that will be the supernatural uh, explosive growth of the church and mass salvation of souls. Shout hallelujah. You see, we must understand that the altar of prayer, like we have said over and again, is the birthplace of multitudes into the kingdom. It is from prayer that souls are born. It is from prayer. Prayer is what contraction is to the delivery of a child. That is why we call prayer travail. It is where we push for the delivery of souls. I see each one of us coming alive to our responsibility on the altar of prayer. If you believe that that is you, say louder, amen. I said I see each one of us come alive to our responsibility on the altar of prayer. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I see each one of us coming alive to our responsibility on the altar of prayer. Amen. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. That is the place of prayer. So prayer is one of the vital responsibilities that, you know, we must take as far as the season of revival is concerned. And the result of it is salvation of souls and the explosive growth of the church. Now, a revival is set to occur when the following happens. Number one, when praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. Not just that you are doing it because you are told to, but you are delighting in the process of doing it. You are excited in doing it. When praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight, that is when you can be said to be in a revival. So one can be said to be in a revival when he's excited at advancing the altar of prayer, uh, advancing the kingdom of God, sorry, on the altar of prayer. That's when you can say such a person is in a revival. 
Not that he's praying kingdom advancement prayer just because they said pray kingdom advancement prayer. No. But his heart delights in it. His heart is excited at it. Psalm 34 and verse, and verse, and verse, 37 and verse 4. He said, delight thyself in the Lord and he will give thee the desires of your heart. When God becomes your delight, your desires will not need to be asked for. They are delivered on their own accord. I see somebody here today receiving grace to begin to delight in the advancement of the kingdom on the altar of prayer. Somebody believe you say loud amen. So we are, when, when, when you delight in it, then you can be said to be in a revival. So a man or woman that is in a revival is excited to pray kingdom advancement prayers. They are excited. They delight in it. They delight in it. Shout hallelujah. They delight in it. And that's why you find such individuals, even their personal supplications are infiltrated primarily by kingdom advancement prayers. Infiltrated primarily by kingdom advancement prayers. You see, when you do not have a delight in kingdom matters, you can't begin to experience the benefits of the season of revival. My prayer is that for each one of us from this day onward, our hearts will begin to delight in the advancement of God's kingdom. Yeah. Number two is when one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved. When one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved, then you can say such a person is in revival. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16, look at what Paul the apostle said. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 16. And for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Look at what Paul the Apostle said in the book of Romans chapter uh, 10 and verse 1. Romans 10 and verse 1. Look at what Paul the Apostle said here. He said that, you know, Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. He began to speak there. He said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel that they may be saved. That is my desire. Romans chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. Look at what the Bible tells us here. It says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. What am I saying? That I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. What is disturbing you, Paul? Verse 3, for I could wish that myself were a cause from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. That is a man whose passion to see souls saved was burning endlessly in his heart. That is the story of the man, Paul. No wonder you can look at the life of Paul as the picture of one that was revived. He was a man whose passion kept burning to see souls saved, to see souls set free from darkness. I see each one of us today receiving that same grace that was on Paul in the name of Jesus. God's servant has shared with us his testimony how at the age of 19, he went down to a particular village as a relief teacher and he was to spend just about 72 days there. And when he got there, he discovered there was no church and he knelt down in, by his bed in that village hut where he was staying and said, Lord, see to it that I don't leave this village the same way I met it. And with that passion, house to house, he started going to visit the parents or families of the children he was teaching and leading each one of them to Christ. And within 40 days, a church was built. By the time he was departing, a lantern was given to him. The light you brought to this village, let it shine around the world. Passion to see souls saved. Passion. That's what makes a difference. That's what makes a difference. Passion to see souls saved. When your heart is burning for the lost, you become an instrument in the hand of God and God can't use you and leave you. God uses you and decorates you. He said, this light you have brought, let it shine around the world. So that, that investment he made at the age of 19 is part of the reason why the light is shining across the world up till now as it's moving closer and closer even towards 70. 
the light is still shining. It will keep shining towards 80. It will keep shining towards 90. Is somebody getting what God is saying? As we keep engaging, God never uses a man and dumps him. He uses him and decorates him. Each one of us out of this season, God will decorate you and I. Now, what is in a revival for us? Three things we are going to look at. Blessings and decorations that come as a result of being engaged in a revival. Number one, the life of every engaging believer is transformed in a revival. You don't remain the same. In the season of revival, as you are engaging, you are changing. As you are engaging, you are changing. As you are engaging, you are changing. There are dramatic changes that are taking place in the realm of the spirit that will provoke changes in the physical. As you are engaging, you are changing. There is a supernatural transformation. In Isaiah chapter 61, from verse 1 all the way down to verse 7, the Bible gives us a picture of revival. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel and so forth. And beginning from verse 4, it begins to paint us the picture of the changes that take place. He said, and they shall build the old ways. And they shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. He says, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of aliens shall be thy plowmen and thy vine dressers. He says, but you shall be called the priest of the Lord. He said, and men will call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory will you boast yourself. He said, for your shame you will have double. And for confusion they will rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. And everlasting joy shall be unto them. As you are engaging, you are changing. As you are engaging, you are changing. Don't you hear testimonies of all kinds? Individuals say that oh, I've, I've, been, I've been engaging and suddenly the career stagnation I've had for many years just terminated on its own. Why? As you are engaging, you are changing. There is something about each one of us that keeps transforming as we keep engaging. My prayer is that for each one of us in this season, we shall yet experience another dimension of transformation. If you believe it, say loud, amen. Yeah. Number two, every move of the Spirit of God confers dominion on every engaging believer. Dominion on every engaging believer. It confers dominion. On every engaging believer. Why? He that winneth souls is wise. Proverbs 11.30. And Proverbs 18 verse 15 to 18. It is through wisdom that kings are able to reign. And decree justice. So when a man or woman is committed to the advancement of the kingdom of God. They begin to take charge in the affairs of life. There is dominion conferred upon them. I have good news for each one of us. In this season, there shall be strange liftings. I said, there shall be strange liftings. God will be catapulting some individuals that look like they don't fit where he's taking them to. He will move them dramatically from the back to the front. If you are one of them, say the loudest, amen. That's one of the effects of revival. In the midst of revival, there are unique liftings because the wisdom that comes positions men to take charge. By me, wisdom, kings reign and princes decree justice. That means you are elevated to the place of rulership via your engagement in the advancement of the kingdom of God. I decree again this morning that by the engagement of this season, there will be strange liftings. And finally, number three, our needs are supernaturally met in the revival. Our needs are supernaturally met. Luke 22 verse 35, when I sent you, did you lack anything? And they said nothing. Our needs are supernaturally met. When you are engaging in the advancement of the kingdom of God, you will have no reason to beg. Haven't you heard God's servant share his testimony over and over again? He said, I have never knocked on any man's door to say, can you help me? When a man is chasing God, that man cannot also be chasing men. You can't pursue God and need to pursue men. No way. He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. You won't struggle for them. They will be added unto you. 
I pray that somebody today by this encounter will enter into that realm of strange additions. If you believe it, say a loud amen. Now quickly, today is our day, our covenant day of marital breakthroughs. What are some of the keys to commanding marital breakthroughs? What are some of the keys? God's servant said this in the second service, that ignorance is the greatest challenge of believers in the kingdom today. Ignorance is the greatest challenge of believers in the kingdom today. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, my people are gone into captivity because they lack knowledge. My people are gone into captivity because they lack knowledge. So there is what we must know and what we must do in order to experience whatever we desire. Whatever is contrary to the picture God has painted for us in scriptures is a pointer to the fact that there is light that is inadequate that we have not yet gotten. Our light is still inadequate because when light shines, darkness cannot comprehend it. John chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. He said, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This morning I pray that by the encounter we are having upon this mountain, our light will come. Yeah. And every form of darkness shall be shattered. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now it's important to know that every child of God that so desires has the God-given heritage to be settled in marriage. Every child of God that so desires has the God-given heritage to be settled. It is your right in Christ to be settled in marriage. The word of God makes clear to us in Genesis 2, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a help that is made for him. Genesis 2, 17 and 18. You have the God-given right to be settled in marriage as long as it's what you want. So stop going to check statistics. Some of us are so concerned that we even go online and check what is the ratio of men to women on the earth today. That is not your business. Is somebody getting what God is saying? The scripture is absolutely clear. He said it's not good for man to be alone. I will make for him a help that is meet. Don't bother about the statistics of the whole earth bother about your own. And according to scripture, he said he has made a help that is meet for you. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. In Proverbs 18 and verse 22, the Bible tells us, Proverbs 18 and verse 22, we are told there, it says that he that finds a wife finds a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. And in the book of Psalm chapter 5 verse 12, we are made to understand very clearly, it says that thou will bless the righteous and with favor you will compass him around as with a shield. So every child of God is a candidate for marital settlement because God has granted each one the marital favor required. Therefore today, every veil that may be covering anyone's marital destiny, that veil is torn apart today. If you believe it, say a loud amen. I said, if you believe it, say a loud amen. If you believe it, say the loudest amen. Also, marriage is a good thing. And every good thing is our entitlement in Christ. Psalm chapter 34 and verse 10. It says that he will not withhold any good thing. He said, they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. So it is our right in Christ. It's our right in Christ. The question, therefore, is what will it take for each one of us to experience the blessing that God has for us maritally? First of all, like we said, there is need for light. And the light shows you that it is your right. Say with me, it is my right. Come on, say it like you mean it is my right. Say it like you really mean it is my right. Say it like you are sure about it, it's my right. It is our right in Christ. If you are born again, you are a child of God, then to be maritally settled is your right. And you have come to this mountain of deliverance. 
And I know that by the prophetic word that will be coming as God's servant will stand to release blessings upon us, everything that has been an obstacle to the delivery of that right shall be shattered in the name of Jesus. In Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the Bible said, By a prophet, Israel was brought out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he delivered by a prophet. So today, by the prophetic engagement, that God's servant will be releasing today from this altar. Everyone that has been held bound from their marital testimony, today your testimony shall be delivered. Yeah. But beyond just getting married, God has a plan for us to have a crisis-free marital experience. Crisis-free. So me crisis-free. But to calm the challenges in marriages, we look at four very important keys before we pray. Four important keys before we pray. To calm storms in marriages. Number one key is to seek forgiveness by repentance. And this is particularly important where there may have, there may have been any erring in marriage. Take note of this. Where any marriage has no sure foundation in Christ, the individuals must seek forgiveness through genuine repentance if they must enjoy times of refreshing. Don't toy with it. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4, marriage is honorable in all. It says, the bed undefiled. So the honor of marriage only comes when there is no defilement. So perhaps there has been defilement, whether it was through fornication before marriage, whether it's through adultery inside marriage, first go to God. Don't pretend before God. Go to God and repent. Genuine repentance is the only avenue to gain access to forgiveness. Genuine repentance. Genuine repentance discovered that there are so many instead of repenting they keep pretending and as a result of that the struggles continue to escalate but today I see liberty coming the way of somebody here in the name of Jesus Christ number two everyone going through marital challenges should seek light they must seek light two sources one is from the word of God directly and two, from anointed books on marriage by proven authors. Seek light. Matthew 19 and verse 4. I love this scripture. They asked Jesus a question about marriage. And look at how Jesus answered. He answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? Marriage is too important not to read. Have ye not read? We must take time to settle with God's word. Go for light in God's word. Go for light in anointed books so that the shackles can be broken. I see every shackle being broken in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, say a loud amen. Go for light. But it's important to know that it's not enough to get the light. It is vital to walk in the light. It's vital to do what? That is do what the light has shown you. Walk in the reality of the light. When you see what God's word says, walk in the light. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And may I say this, it will, help, it will help us. The word of God is largely a mirror. It's largely what? It's largely a mirror. It is not a camera. It's a mirror. The purpose of a mirror is to show us to us. I discovered many times, even when people are going through marital challenges, they will read the Bible for the spouse. He said, my husband, see what the Bible says that you are not doing. My wife, see what the Bible says that you are not doing. See what the Bible says that you as the one reading is not doing. I see people all the time say, Pastor, did the Bible not say husbands love your wife as Christ loves the church? This man does not love me. The Bible says husbands. You are not a husband, you are the wife. That part is for him. Let him read it and see it. When I say wife, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. That part is for you. You should see that one and do it. 
If everybody faces their own part, there will be no crisis to see. Is somebody getting what God is saying? The challenge is that everybody is making themselves an expert in other people's matters. Expert in every... This man does not know how to love. This woman does not know how to submit at all, at all, at all. If your name is not Gide and I say Gide, you should not answer me. So when the Bible says husband is not talking to the wife, wife, don't look at it. Move on to the part he's talking to you. When it says wife, he's not talking to husband. Husband, move on to the part that is talking to you. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? So God is telling us that we must walk in the light. Don't give excuses why you will not do it. Number three is rebellion against the covenant. This is one of the reasons why many homes are in crisis. Particularly in these modern times. Most people are taking the marital picture. Instead of taking it from scriptures, they are taking it from the world. It is from what they see on social media, what they see in movies and so forth, that they are trying to imbibe as culture. There is no culture that is superior to scriptures. Hello? There is no culture that is superior to scriptures. Scripturally speaking, the husband is head of the wife. Somebody say, hey, how can you say that? People are supposed to be equal. As human beings, they are equal. As husband and wife, the, wife, the husband is head over the wife. That is the scriptural position. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Anything with two heads is a monster. If you see one day your dog wakes up and he has two heads, will you not run? Anything with two heads is a monster. For administrative purposes, the husband is the head of the wife. It is not for domineering purposes either. So husband, don't now begin to oppress the wife based on your position. I'm the head. I'm the head. I'm the head. I'm the head. It, is not, it doesn't need to be said. If you are in a work environment, your boss does not keep on telling you, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. It is known already. Is somebody getting what God is saying? To be the head, show leadership. Show example. Keep leading the way. Keep covering the family. Keep lifting the family. That is your duty as the head. He said he gave, he said to, that Christ, you were to love our wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's what it means to be the head. So let's take covenant responsibility. And finally, number four. Number four reason why many are in crisis is living apart. Living apart. Biblically, in marriage, the two partners have become one flesh. Therefore, living apart is a risk. Hello? Living apart is what? It's a risk. Particularly in this, these days, uh, where somebody will just see small money and send the family outside and then stay on ground. It's a risk. I pastored in Europe for many years. I saw plenty of people who claim their husband is at home. And I know the result of that. Plenty crisis. By the time they come back together, they don't understand themselves. Two of them have been living such different lives. Beyond that, it is the highway to temptation. The highway to temptation. You left your husband, you traveled to Canada with your children to take care of them. Who is cooking for your husband? Who is taking care of your husband? Be careful before there is an assistant wife. Is somebody getting what God is saying? So if you have done that, stop it. Tell them to come home. Tell them to come home. Be in the same place at the same time. There is no excuse that is, that is, that is acceptable for being separate. If you won't go, they must come. You must be in the same place. That is the scriptural standard. Lift your hand to heaven. Let's give thanks to God. Let's give him thanks. Father, thank you for your word that has come our way. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Before we go any further this morning, you are here, you are not born again, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. That's the starting point. That's where to begin from. 
That is how to enjoy the best of God. That's how to enjoy the blessings of God. That's what, how to enjoy the lifting of God. Wherever you are, you say, I want to be born again. I want to become a child of God. Quickly stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All over this place, you want to become a child of God. You want to be born again. Quickly on your feet. All over this place. God bless you. 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 Secondly, there are those who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something has gone wrong. You have made some errors. You have disconnected over the course of time and you want to reconnect. You want to return so that you can be restored. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Quickly stand on your feet also. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Are you clapping for Jesus as they stand everywhere? Our God is worthy of praise. Now, suspend filling your form for a moment and just lift up your right hand before the Lord and pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, loud and clear, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Save me. Deliver me. I will follow you all the days of my life and never turn back. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keep your hand lifted as I pray. Father, thank you for these precious people. They have responded to your call and they have confessed Jesus as Lord. Give them grace to keep following you and never ever turn back. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. It is done. Congratulations. It's a new day. Please complete your form. Submit it to the officials. They will give you a little card. It's a we love you card. Once the service concludes, you take that card to any one of the new convertants and drop the card to pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. We also have our foundation class that takes place every Monday. Our office will be sending to you an SMS with the location of the class that is closest to where you live. Please take advantage of the class. You attend Mondays, just two Mondays, tomorrow Monday and the upper Monday, and it will give you a firm foundation for a wonderful walk with the Lord. So take advantage of it, and you surely shall be blessed as you do so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also have the online option of the class. If you are unable to make the physical um, location by reason of your work, uh, you may also attend online and the Lord will honor you as you do in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Shall we all rise on our feet, everybody? Lift your hand before the Lord and let us give glory to God from the depth of our hearts for his word that we have received. Father, thank you for the blessing of your word that has come our way. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's give Jesus a big hand as we receive our Father. Hallelujah. Give the Lord another big hand of praise. The word says, Isaiah 44, verse 26, I'm the Lord that confirmed the word of my servant and performed the counsel of my messengers. Today I decree an end to every marital storm yeah. in the life of anyone in this service, on ground or online. Yeah. You will testify. Yeah. Most of the time, we find ourselves under the, under the oppressions of the devil. But Jesus said, in my name you cast out devils. It's our father that says, it's in families and brings out those that are bound with chains. Every marital bondage responsible for unending crisis is declared broken today. Every chain of marital delay is declared over today. <laughs> and for everyone set for marriage, among these precious sons and daughters of Zion, the year 2023, our year of covenant highways, 
God has paved a way for your marital settlement. The year is declared your year. A word of encouragement for you. I knew that Matthew recovers every aspect of human need. So when a friend said to me, Brother David, it's time to pray for life partner, I responded, my own is already settled. He said, how? Matthew has covered it. For everyone genuinely engaging in advancing the kingdom of God, this year is declared your year of marital settlement. There's a shift in the world of the spirit from the realm of claiming promises to working in the covenant. When we do what he commands us to do, we won't need to beg him to do what he says he will do in this turn. We won't need to beg him. Therefore, as you keep up in the light of the word you have received, in the name of Jesus, there shall be no more marital concerns in your life. No more concerns in your business. No more concerns over your sons and daughters. For when you are following the Lord, only goodness and mercy are permitted to follow you. So from now, crisis will not follow you anymore. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As you keep working with Jesus, for in his presence there is fullness of joy. I decree an end to every air of depression around your life. From the teachings we have just heard, you have a lively hope in Christ, a living hope. No case can be closed against you when you're on God's side. Therefore, in the precious name of Jesus, Whatever has been held down by the enemy, I command it released today. This week, runaway wives will return back home. Runaway husbands will return back home. All abandoned children will rejoice again. Every force holding down anyone out of his marital home is declared broken. In the name of Jesus, it will make you to laugh. It will make you to laugh. From today, no more casting down your head. No more casting down your head. You have overcome. You have prevailed. In the name of Jesus. It's finally, finally your turn. You will sing your new song of triumph this year. In the name of Jesus. What I declare is one, what you believe is what determines what you receive. Jesus marveled because he marveled at their own belief. So the faith of the prophet is not enough. Your faith is required. He said to me, touch my tongue with the coal of fire. As you say it, you will see. Everything I speak concerning you today shall come back as testimony. As you depart from here, the new you emerges. Now, wait a minute. I decree a holy marriage between you and Jesus Christ today. When he becomes your bridegroom, the immunity of a first lady accompanies you. The dignity of the office of your husband accompanies you. Therefore, today as you step out, the beauty of heaven begins to radiate in your life. The beauty of heaven begins to radiate in your life. 
The beauty of heaven begins to radiate in your family. In the name of Jesus. Now, we are up here by redemption, sitting in heavenly places. Do they fight there? Do they fight in heavenly places? Do they wrestle in heavenly places? Every trauma in everyone's home is declared over. From now, it shall be songs of joy, yeah. songs of praise, yeah. songs of adoration. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. so shall it be. Yeah. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Yeah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Please get seated for a moment. The midst of the year revival is still on. May no one take your crown in it. Amen. So hold that fast, which is your portion. Let another man take your crown. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. You will not lose your crown in the process. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There are supposed to be some public holidays this week. Engage with it to fill up the clouds of your fruitful stewardship, that your rains of supernatural favor will start falling. You will encounter favor this week. Yeah. It will impart on all aspects of your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Everybody has a part in it. That's what you heard in the teaching. Everybody has a part in the revival. Please, be awake to take your part. You are either on the go after lost souls going out there or praying up to see saved souls establishing the faith. This year we have recorded over 31,000 people that fill the membership form in this church. Amen. So we have enough to pray about if you have a genuine heart for God. Wherever a man's treasure is, there his heart will be also. If your heart is there, you will invest your time, either in praying or in going out. And God will never need to be appealed to to confirm his word. You are going to be turned to a surprise to yourself this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, we bring them to church to see them preserved. We pray them to see them preserved as they hear the word of God. But we are actually on a rescue mission. We are on a rescue mission to a dying world. Please, carry the posture of a rescue agent, both on your prayer altar and in your going out. You are a rescue agent. You are essentially a rescue agent. We had two very uh, humbling testimonies these last two weeks. One that gave his life to Christ at the rice market, who was on his way to committing suicide. Another 27-year-old lady, 27-year-old lady, called at the point of taking the poison. Jesus intervened and she was rescued. Amen. So the world is under pressure and we are God's rescue agents to bail them out from having the worst. So let's carry that posture as we go. Let's carry that posture as we go. And in the name of Jesus, as you rescue others, no one in your lineage will be in destruction. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Next Sunday is our encounter with destiny. Yeah. Encounter with destiny. Yeah. There are many unseen forces sitting on people's destiny. Next Sunday in that service, God shall be on sitting all those demonic forces and releasing your destiny into a brand new season. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Encounter with Destiny connotes a new chapter opening up. Through that service, God will open a new chapter to your life, a new chapter to your spiritual life, a new chapter to your business and career. A new dawn will dawn. You will experience a new dawn. If God turn out the bay, I hear the cock and I need you never suffer a setback anymore because God is in the midst of His people doing what only himself alone can do. 
it will do something new in your life. Please stand up to your feet. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can I have you say with me, this is my time of visitation. I refuse to be overtaken by the spirit of slumber. I receive grace to stay awake. To make the most of this season in my life. You know what caught up with me in that village? Destiny. 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 Destiny found me. The light you have brought to our village, let it shine round the world. Passion for God will always open a new chapter. Passion for God by any individual will always open a new chapter. I decree that before this season is over, a new chapter a humbling new chapter far beyond anybody's widest imagination will open to you. Yeah. We're in this service today. I can't tell how many nations are on it, but it won't be less than 100 people, 100 nations on this service this morning. By one encounter. By one encounter. I was on the go to see the well-being of my brethren when I encountered this heavenly mandate, everybody with a genuine passion for God experiences a new chapter. Before this season is over, my God, who is also your God, will open a brand new chapter to your life. You'll be surprised at where you find yourself by the end of July. New ideas will struck. Take you to strange places of honor. Yeah. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. So check on the website. We have our prayer bulletins. There are seven of them. We try to put them down to a level where everybody can catch it. 30, 30 prayer items on each one. Download them. Praise God. And give to your friends and everybody that may not have access to the internet. And let's engage. Let's make this week a week of fruitful engagement, both on the prayer altar and on the field for Jesus. Praise God. The Lord gave me 760 souls this last week. To the glory of his name. Amen. Nobody's forcing me. It's my delight. It's my joy. I'm not doing that to impress nobody. I'm not doing it to receive an applause. I'm just enjoying myself. Knowing I'm in the center of the will of God. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray that the same grace that God has bestowed on me to be tireless in my pursuit will be your portion. Yeah. Nobody can partake of a grace he does not crave for. He said, honestly covet the best gift. Any gift you see walking somewhere and you desire, he said, you are free to covet. You are free to what? I coveted the grace on Copeland, I got it. Converted the grace on again, I got it. It's, 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 it's not wisdom not to know what you want when you see it. When I see what I wanted, I, I, I knew it. Yes, if you can make God your priority for living, you won't have stress anymore. Yes, I don't have any stress. I've, I've been through all kinds of things. I don't have any stress. No stress. No stress. No stress. His presence dominates you. And that makes all the difference. When you are at peace, it takes over your battle. From now, you won't need to struggle to see victory anymore. Yeah. His presence will make the difference in your life. Yeah. Lift up those two hands, everybody, and give God thanks for this awesome time. And together, let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the Covenant Highways of Life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do. If you came in after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering and be blessed as you do. All our new converts, remember to take the We Love You card you have been given to any one of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle, drop the card at those tents. They will give you a gift item from the church for your edification. 
If you want to share a testimony in the fourth service, please quickly rush to any of the major entrances. Our pastors are waiting right there to document your testimonies. Be blessed. Choir.
If you're excited to be in this service, our covenant day of marital breakthrough, in the last service in the month of June, shout Hosanna for our God reign it. We are going to call ourselves to worship as we read responsively from Psalm 124. Psalm 124, I will take verse 1, we chorus together verse 2, then you read verse 3 and we continue like that to the end. Psalm 124, verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, verse 2, together, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4, then the waters had over, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse 6, Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to our teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Verse 8, together, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. You are welcome. Please listen attentively to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for this fourth service. Number one, praise the Lord. Be reminded that we are in the midst of the year prophetic season. Daily prayer and gospel raids hold throughout this season. Note that the daily prayer holds in designated zones across Lagos and Otter. The time is 8 to 9.30 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. Mondays through Fridays, except on Wednesday evenings. It is a platform to ensure that all our senior citizens, the aged nursing mothers, partake of this kingdom advancement endeavor. Remember... There's a place for everyone in a revival. Your place shall not be taken by another in this revival season. You are saying amen. Say loud amen. amen. Number two, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that the Faith Tabernacle 24-hour global rescue call center is in full operation. This platform is set up for prayers, counseling, information on events, and general inquiries. The call center number is plus 234-7080-638000. Number three, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow Monday through Saturday, both here in Canaan land and in all our designated locations across Lagos and Otter. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number four, Praise the Lord. Christ commanded that we share our testimonies. As we saw in the cleansing of the ten lepers, how he questioned, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Only the one that returned had his healing perfected. Therefore, share your testimonies with us, and they shall not only be perfected, they shall be preserved and they shall be multiplied. Send your testimonies to testimonies at davidoyedepoministries.com. Number five, praise the Lord. Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow Monday. This takes place live at all our BFC centers across Lagos, Ottawa, and Environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time, 
6 to 7.30 p.m. Note that this can also be taken online at the link displayed on the screen, bfc.lfcww.org. Number six, praise the Lord. Midweek communion service holds this coming Wednesday, both here in Canaan Land and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ort and Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion and the time is 6 p.m. Number seven, Winners Satellite Fellowship. Our House to House Fellowship holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Otter. Remember that we shall be praying for one another, invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time and don't miss this for anything. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Number eight, recommended books of the month authored by Bishop David Oyedeko includes Fanning Revive of Fire, The Wisdom That Works, Walking in Wisdom, Conquering Controlling Powers, Walking in the Newness of Life, and All You Need to Have All Your Needs Met. Finally, number nine, next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our Encounter with Destiny service. We can make that club bigger and better for the Lord this afternoon. It shall be our prophetic entrance into the month of July. Come expecting an encounter with a prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. We shall be holding four services, the times again, 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 Am Jesus is Lord. Please give the Lord a big, big, big hand. In this fourth service, it is testimony time. Please let's listen to the following documented testimonies, and we shall be blessed in Jesus' name. This first one is captioned: "Release from prison after salvation." Church, put those hands together for the Lord. I am a Muslim convert, but before my conversion, I was in the Ikoi Maximum Prison for two years and seven months. While I was there, a brother from this church comes to meet with us regularly, and because of his show of love towards us, in January 2023, I decided to give my life to Christ. Are you clapping for Jesus? Thereafter... I got a change of name from Farouk to Felix. Lo and behold, on the 28th of April, 2023, I was released. I return all the glory to God. And the testifier is brother Felix Tijani. Are you clapping for Jesus? The second one is captioned, my husband returned back home. Are you clapping for Jesus? My husband woke up one day and left the house as usual. And I called to ask about him. He turned against me and called me names. I called my father-in-law to explain things to him. To my surprise, he told me it was too late that my husband had already moved in with another woman whom he normally visited whenever he traveled. I became more confused. My children and I went to pay him a visit, and his entire family drove us out. I ran to God's servant, and he declared, your husband will come back, and you shall enjoy peace in your home. And I said, amen. The following day, I was told that my father-in-law, who drove me and the children out, drove the evil woman out of the house. Are you clapping for Jesus? And to my greater surprise, my husband came back home today and apologized. His love for me increased more than it was. Even those who drove me out now love me and the kids more than before. 
To God be all the glory for restoring my home. Are you clapping for Jesus? Vicky E is the testifier. In this service, you are next in line for your own restoration testimony. In the name of Jesus. Put those hands together for the Lord. Let somebody shout the loudest. Hallelujah. Right now in this service, it's time for end of month special Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication. Give the Lord a big, big clap offering. Praise God. I know that God has done you well. Do I have a witness in the house today? Say, me, God has done me well, oh. Therefore, shortly we all shall be upstanding, today being the last Sunday in the month of June. The first half of the year is rounding up. And here you are in the sanctuary, not in the mortuary, with smile on your face because God has been good to you. So shortly we all shall be upstanding. The choir shall be leading us in high praises. We shall be having in front of the altar here the children and marriages that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication. Each and every one of us has many, many reasons to give thanks unto God. Therefore, if you have space, you come to the front of the altar. If not, wherever you may be together, we shall be rejoicing, glorifying the name of the Lord. Our anchor scripture at this time, Psalm 150 and verse 6. Psalm 150 and verse 6. The psalmist says, let everything that hath bread do what? Do what? Do what? Say, Lord, I praise you. Therefore, please rise up on your feet with joy and gratitude in your heart. Let's have the people already listed in front of the altar here, and the choir begins to lead us in high praises. Remember to take your thanksgiving and dedication seat in your hand as we thank God right now. Praise God. I will exalt you, Lord. For thou hast lifted me above my enemies, your banner over me is love. I will exalt you, Lord, for you have lifted me. You are worthy of my praise, your banner. Please bow your heads, everyone. Lift up your voice right now to God and thank Him personally. Praise Him, glorify Him. We already sang it in song. Now speak it in words by yourself with your mouth and glorify Him. Thank Him and thank Him and thank Him some more. 
God has been good to you. Glorify his name. Let him know how grateful you are right now. Worship his majesty. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have returned today like that one leper with a loud voice as individuals and as a church family. For every good thing in our lives, you are the source. Therefore, accept our thanksgiving. For all the babies and the children in the house today that are here for thanksgiving and dedication, they are your gift. They came from you. Therefore, as they have been handed over to you today and they have been anointed, let your spirit and your grace rest upon them. Yeah. None of these children will die young. Yeah. They shall live long and strong. Yeah. They shall be sources of joy to their parents yeah. and to the body of Christ at large. Yeah. And we use these children today as a point of contact for the release of many more miracle babies. Those who are looking up to you for the release of miracle babies, Father, today, settle their case. Yes. We thank you for the miracle marriages that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication. Only you can take a man and a woman and make the two of them one flesh. Therefore, today, we decree and declare this marriage is blessed. Yes. They shall be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. And on this day, when we are celebrate our covenant day of marital settlement they shall be settled permanently for anyone believing you for miracle marriages lord settle them supernaturally for each and every one of us standing here today thanking you for various blessings in our lives father accept our thanksgiving whatever your people are standing here today thanking you for let it never be turned to sorrow we thank you for the breath in our nostrils we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for having us as our Heavenly Father. We thank you for miracle houses, miracle jobs, Lord, miracle vehicles. We thank you for divine protection. We thank you for divine provision. Lord, for all things in our lives, you are the source. Take all the praise, Lord. The shout of joy shall never depart from your habitation. In the name of Jesus Christ. This same time next month, let each of us have many more reasons to glorify your name. And none of us shall be missing. We shall all be here in our multiplied state to the glory and praise of your name. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Would you please take your thanksgiving and dedication, seat, lift it up unto God, present it to him. Remember that the offering for the service is coming later. This seed is for thanksgiving and dedication right now. Wave it to the Lord. Glorify his name. Say me, thank you, Jesus. Louder yet, thank you, Jesus. The loudest you can, thank you, Jesus. May your seed be acceptable in Jesus' mighty name. And louder and believe in him. Amen. Again, the choir shall be leading us in high praises. We shall be rejoicing and glorifying the name of the Lord. Please ensure your children are word anointed and drop your thanksgiving and dedication seat. Praise God. Praise.
You may be seated in his presence. Today, it's my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday like this, may I ask that you stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. Will you give Jesus a big hand as these precious people rise everywhere? Our God is worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. Please. Remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand the welcome package. Along with it, you'll be given a card that you need to fill in the course of this welcome. Once you have received that card and the package, please take your seat and begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. I want to especially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the Church Universal, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a center of signs and wonders by divine mandate, where God turns impossible cases into open miracles. We continuously see God changing the stories of men and women, old and young boys and girls, as they engage with the truth of the word as taught on this mountain. For over four decades, God has continued to confirm his word in this church, thereby making every member a wonder to many as they believe. If you'll endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did to Obedidom. I want to welcome you today to this home of signs and wonders. And may today's encounter usher you into the realms of ear-tingling testimonies that you have always longed for in the name of of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. May I ask one more time for all of our first time worshipers to please rise for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise one more time for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for these precious people. You have drawn them by your mighty hand and you brought them to bless them. Lord, by your authority today, we declare each one of these precious people blessed. Whatever concerns they may have left behind, Lord, to come into church today, let every one of those matters be converted to open testimonies. Above all, for any one of these precious people who are yet to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, may today be the day of their salvation. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud amen. amen. It is done. Please be seated. Ensure that your forms are clearly completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Good news. In the service, it is offering time. Make it louder, my blessing time. This is time to put together all that you have come to worship the Lord with in this service this afternoon. This includes your tithe, which is 10% of God's increase upon your life, and your regular Sunday worship seed. Please also remember that you can give using cash offerings or using check. If it's check, make it payable to Faith Tabernacle, Kinalan or any of our electronic giving channels as shown on the screen. As we put them together, let's take an anchor from scriptures. Genesis chapter 8 at verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. This seed will bring harvest to you. Please rise with me on your feet this afternoon. Lift up your seed to heaven. Present them to God by yourself. Father, thank you. That in this last Sunday, 
I have a seed to worship you. Thank you for out of the abundance you are giving to me, I brought this to celebrate your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Please keep your seat lifted. Our Father, this afternoon we are here saying thank you. Accept us as you accept this seed. Let this seed bring to all bountiful harvest of financial blessings. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Please be seated. Cast your seed as we receive the Faith Tabernacle Choir for the administration.
keeper of life, your word. Let's give our worthy God a worthy praise. This afternoon, with our hands lifted up, let's magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for bringing you and I to the last Sunday of the month of June. If God has been truly good to you with your hands lifted up, let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's magnify his name. Father, we honor you. We thank you and we bless your name for bringing us to the final Sunday in this month of June. We appreciate your name, Jesus. Be thou glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, we're in our midst of the year revival, and every time we gather is an opportunity to be personally revived. I want you to speak to the Lord right now. Lord, in this fourth service, send me a personal word that will set me on fire. He made John a burning and shining light. John 5.35. Lift up your voices right now and ask God for a personal encounter in this fourth service. Lord, I desire a personal encounter in this fourth service. Send me a word that will set me ablaze. Send me a word that will ignite me personally. That will lead to a corporate revival even in our midst. Father, that word is what I desire. I thank you for it, Lord and be thou glorified in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody shout a revived amen. amen. Heavenly Father, all eyes are on you in this fourth service. You have spoken to us in the first, spoken to us in the second, spoken to us in the third, and we know you yet have something else to speak to us in the fourth service. By the blood of the Lamb, we gain access into this holy word. Holy Spirit, teach us by yourself. Let your word be like fire shut up in our bones. Let Jesus alone be glorified. For all you do, I vow to return all the glory, honor, and praise. For it is in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And somebody will shout a revived amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. I give thanks to God and his servant for this awesome opportunity to share God's word with us here in the fourth service. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, this season will answer in your life and my own life. Did I hear louder? Amen. amen. And anyone that may have come in here under any marital siege or going through any marital storm, by the time this fourth service is over, peace will have been still. In the name of Jesus. Understanding the blessedness of a revival, part four. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. The blessedness of a revival is anchored on the choices of the one who desires to be revived. The blessedness of a revival is anchored on the choices of the one who desires to be revived. That's why there are three things among others to note. If you and I truly desire to be revived, then we must make a choice to serve God. A choice to serve God is a choice for all round rest in a world of unrest. A choice to serve God, number one, is a choice for all round rest in 
a world of unrest. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. John, Joshua, sorry, chapter 24, verse 15. But as for me and my house, we have made a choice to serve God. We see how that choice translated to all around rest in a world of unrest. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 12 to 15, they made a decision, a choice to serve God. And the Bible says he gave them rest round about. So one, a choice to serve God is a choice for all round rest in a world of unrest. Two, a choice to serve God is a choice for freedom in the place of bondage. When the children of Israel were going to move out of Egypt, the place of bondage, he said, let my people go that they may serve me. You can serve your way out of bondage to freedom. So a choice to serve God is a choice for freedom in the place of bondage. Number three, a choice to serve God is a choice for blessings in the place of struggles. A choice to serve God is a choice for blessings in the place of struggles. If you obey and serve me, you will spend your days in prosperity. Job 36, 11. And your years in pleasures. If they obey and serve me. Now, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. Exodus 23, 25 to 26. It will take away sickness from the midst of thee. And all these blessings shall be your portion by a choice to serve God. What is God saying to us in the fourth service? The blessedness of this midst of the year revival is anchored on those who have made a decision to be revived by serving God. May that grace to serve God earnestly, to serve God fervently, to serve God fearlessly, May that grace be released upon you and I now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Did I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Because no man can make God first in life and miss his enviable place in destiny. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Those who make a choice to make God first never miss road to destiny. That's why I pray for all of us who have made that decision and strengthen our decision by our choices today. You and I will arrive at our destiny, but not only would we arrive, we will arrive there early. There will be no delay in our arrival. Every destiny that has your name on it, my name on it, by our choice to serve God and the interest of his kingdom, you shall get there and fulfill destiny. Let me hear a louder amen in the fourth service. When God is out of the equation in one's life, frustration sets in. As long as a man or a woman remains connected to the vine, whatever the vine carries flows to the branches. A genuine heart for God and the interest of his kingdom is the anchor for every great destiny in the kingdom. Nothing shakes a man or a woman who have anchored their lives in serving God and the interest of his kingdom. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 37. <laughs> See what Paul the Apostle said. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? He said, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things... We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, verse 38 please, I am persuaded that neither death 
nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, the Lord of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So we need a genuine heart for God and the interest of his kingdom in order to arrive at this great destiny that God has ordained for us. When God occupies the central stage in a man's life, all things begin to work together for good. For we know all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans 8 and verse 28. When God and the interest of his kingdom becomes your priority, my priority for living, God steps in to favor you and I. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her is come. Yea, the set time. Why? Because they take pleasure in thy stones. Within this midst of the year revival season, things you could never save for, things you could never plan for, things you could never budget for, will locate you in the name of Jesus. Let me hear the loudest amen. amen. To be without God in this world is to be without hope which is the breeding ground for depression. Depression simply means loss of hope. Depression simply means hope empty. Depression simply means hope faded away. But when God remains the center, takes the central stage, when you are with God in this world, you can be sure that depression has no place in your life and my life. No one can take two sides at the same time. You have to choose one side. If God be God, then serve him. If Baal be Baal, then serve him. But with the choice you and I have made today, in the name of Jesus, all that this revival season carries, you and I will be able to testify of each one of them being fulfilled in our lives. In the name of Jesus. So we have said, everyone's lot in life is a function of his choice. Life and death are placed before you Choose life that you and your seed may live. Having said all of that, and perhaps you and I have already made that choice to serve God within this season and beyond. What is a revival? Two definitions for today. Number one, a revival is a move of the spirit across people of all age groups, culminating in diverse supernatural turnarounds. A revival is a move of the spirit. So in every revival, the spirit of God is on the move. A revival is a move of the spirit across people of all age groups culminating in diverse supernatural turnarounds. He said, I will pour out my spirit. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They will ascend another dimension. Your old men shall dream dreams. Even while they are old, they still see greater things ahead. Your young men shall see visions. Verse 29, please. He said, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. A revival is a move of the spirit across people of all age groups. He says, all flesh. It covers all ages. It covers all stages. It covers all status. I will pour out my spirit. People will ascend to another dimension by the move of the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in our workplaces, even on campuses, even in secondary schools, by the outpouring of the spirit, in this season of revival, we will see diverse supernatural turnarounds. Let me hear the loudest amen. By this outpouring, some of you will step into places tomorrow that you had gone as usual people in the past. And it will be clear that the you that left last week is not the you that arrived on Monday morning. Let me hear a stronger amen. In a revival, the Holy Ghost speaks from every age. Children begin to speak unspeakable things. Young adults begin to flow in dimensions. The aged still working at realms that could not be imagined. The young, the old, the handmaids, the servants. 
There is a place for everyone in a revival. I pray for you and I that this midst of the year, from the children's department all the way to every facet of the church, we will see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit culminating in diverse supernatural turnarounds in the name of Jesus. Did I hear a stronger amen? Number two, what is a revival? A revival is a move of the Spirit that unleashes the spirit of prayer and supplication. The scripture calls it the spirit of grace and of supplication. The spirit of prayer and of supplication upon God's people resulting in mass salvation of souls. When the spirit of revival is at work, the spirit of prayer is activated. You just find out that you are praying. You are woken up from sleep and it is prayer. Because there is a spirit that is outpoured. You are in the bus, it is prayer. You are driving, it is prayer. You are in the restroom, it is prayer. You are everywhere, it is prayer. There is no dull moment in the midst of a revival. The spirit of prayer is outpoured. The interest in prayer, the drive for prayer, the consistency in prayer, the fervency in prayer. We can't claim to be in a revival and our prayer life is not set ablaze. We can't claim to be in a revival and our prayer life is not set on fire. We can't claim to be in a revival and our prayer schedule before the midst of the year is still the same thing now. And one month out of two months have already left. In the name of Jesus Christ, in this fourth service, for someone who really desires, your prayer life ascends to another dimension. Because this is one major instrument that fuels every revival. Prayer. Prayer. We can't complain that the prayer altar is too, is, is, too, is too frequent. Morning is good. Afternoon is okay. Evening is good. Midnight is good. We find out David prayed three times a day. And David was one man that said, will thou not revive us again? There is something that happens to a man's prayer life in the midst of a revival. A revival is the move of the spirit that unleashes the spirit of prayer and supplication upon God's people. Resulting in massive salvation. We will pray and we will see cities turned into church. We will pray and see people arrested. We will pray and see people show up in church without anyone inviting them. There was something that magnetized them to the environment. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. One Sunday is coming where almost the entire city will be gathered. The security will be wondering what is happening. They will be rushing in like it is emergency. Because it will hiss from the ends of the earth. And then we'll gather them with speed. Swiftly. It's happening. It is happening. In the first service there will not be room. In the second service there will not be room. In the third service there will not be room. In the fourth service there will not be room. In the children's department, there will not be room. In the Yoruba church, there will not be room. In the French church, there will not be room. Everywhere will be filled with multitudes such as eyes have not seen, such as ears have not heard, far greater than 2015. In the name of Jesus Christ. But that will take prayer, the spirit of prayer, unleashed upon God's people. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, please. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. Look at what the word says. Zechariah 12, please, and verse 10. Hallelujah. I will pour upon the house of David. We can look at that saying, I will pour upon the house of winners. I will pour upon the faith tabernacle. And upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they will look upon me whom they have pierced. And they will mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness as one is in bitterness for his first son. Shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 7 to 8. When is a revival set to occur? When two things happen. One, when praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. You delight in it. You look forward to it. 
Your appointment with God on the prayer altar is what you are looking forward to on a daily basis. If it's 6 p.m., you are looking forward to it. 9 p.m., you are looking forward to it. 12 midnight, you are looking forward to it. 1 a.m., 6 a.m., whatever time you've made an appointment with God on the altar of prayer. When you discover that praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. Jesus teaching us to pray. He said, put the kingdom first. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom. Let me hear you. What did he say? Thy kingdom? Come. Revival is kingdom come. Praying for revival is praying for his kingdom to be established upon the earth. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17, he said, pray without ceasing. So when praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight, you enjoy lifting up the matters of the kingdom. You enjoy praying about revival in this midst of the year and beyond. Then a revival is said to occur. Number two, a revival is said to occur when one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved. One is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved. A passion that cannot be killed. Undying passion. At all costs, you want to see souls saved. You are praying for the kingdom, but you are also consumed with passion. Souls saved everywhere you go. You are wondering, do they know Christ as of now? A consuming passion. In Romans, or let's begin with John 15, 16. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit that your fruit shall abide. And that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Romans 1, 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to as many as believe. Passion to see souls saved we usually graduate to preaching, sharing, and advancing the gospel in every way you can. You can't claim to have a passion, a consuming passion to see souls saved without talking to souls about salvation. What is in a revival for us? One may ask. Three things we'll look at this afternoon. One, the life of every engaging believer is transformed in a revival. I want you to see the word transformed as meaning taking a new form, a different form. So when we read the saying, the life of every engaging believer is transformed, it means the life of every engaging believer takes a different form, takes a different shape from what it was before. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1, all the way to verse 7. We don't have time to read that. You will see what happens in the midst of a revival and several things will begin to happen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach and then you now begin to see they shall build. Lives will be transformed. Things will be happening in the midst of a revival. So the life of every engaging believer is transformed in the midst of a revival. Revival's impact is not only general but also personal. Personally, Things begin to happen in your life as your life takes a different form, a different shape from what it used to be. Number two, what is a revival for us? Every move of the Spirit of God confers dominion on every engaging believer. Dominion. Dominion. You just discover that you can have things the way you want it. Dominion. When he sent them forth, they went out there and even the devils were subject to them in his name. He said, you shall trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Luke 10, 19. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So, every move of the Spirit confers dominion on every engaging believer. In this season and beyond, everything you say go to will answer your voice. And everything you say come to will heed to your voice. Number three, what is in a revival for us? Our needs are supernaturally met in a revival. 
Our needs are supernaturally met in a revival. Luke 22 and verse 35, when I sent you out without post nor script, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Philippians 4, 19, after they sent once and again to his need, he said, but my God shall supply all of your needs. So our needs are supernaturally met in a revival. Get set for it. As it was declared before, things you didn't know were still possible this year. Things you couldn't save for. Things you couldn't budget for. Things you couldn't plan for. As you engage in this ongoing revival and beyond, you will see them supplied with ease. Today is our covenant day of marital breakthroughs. And I want you to know that every crisis, every challenge, every tension, every curse that may still be hanging around any family, Today, in the name of Jesus, such tensions, such challenges, such causes are broken in the name of Jesus. We'll be looking at the keys to commanding marital breakthroughs. But first and foremost, we must understand that ignorance is the greatest challenge of the believers in the kingdom today. Isaiah 5.13, Hosea 4.6 he said, my people are destroyed for they lack knowledge. The greatest crisis in the church, the greatest crisis for believers in the kingdom today is not a devil crisis, but an ignorance crisis. Knowledge for anything is key in order to have results. Every child of God who so desires can have their God-given heritage to be settled in marriage. He said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helpmate for him. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. And no good thing will he withhold from them who work perfectly. So there are keys. There are keys that are required to have storms calmed in marriages. There are keys that are required to be settled in your own marital home. Everyone that is set for marriage, today is declared your day of deliverance. And God will settle you supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Now, let's quickly look at four keys to calm the storm in every challenged marriage. Four keys. Key number one where any marriage has no sure foundation in Christ, then the individual's concern must ask for forgiveness through genuine repentance. So number one key to calm the storm in every challenged marriage is the key of genuine repentance. Especially where the foundation was destroyed or is faulty. Psalms chapter 11 and verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then he replied, repent and be baptized every one of you. Wherever there is a faulty foundation, we must get back to the foundation to correct it. And that is done by repentance. Maybe there was fornication before the marriage or adultery or whatever it is, being a wrong foundation, the building will definitely crack until the foundation is taken care of. So, foundation is critical. And repentance is the way to sort out the wrong foundation. Number two, to calm the storm in every challenge marriage, everyone going through marital crisis should seek light from the word of God, one, and should seek light from anointed books by proven authors. We heard how many books God's servant read before entering into each free marriage that is still each free after 40 years. Knowledge stabilizes. He said, wisdom and knowledge shall be what? The stability of thy times. So we get to the word and we get to anointed materials to seek for light. He said, light is sweet. And it's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun. So we don't just seek for repentance. One, we seek for light. Two, light is key. Number three, 
to calm the storms in every challenged marriage. Number three, rebellion against the covenant of fulfilled married life can keep any marriage under tension. So we must come off the path of rebellion. Rebellion is refusal to take the covenant terms as it has been delivered. A man shall leave his father and his mother and they too shall become one. He made Adam and Eve, not now what we are hearing as Adam and Steve. He didn't make Eve and Evelyn. He made Adam and Eve, Eve and Adam, male and female. We must remain glued to what God has said, even when culture says otherwise is okay. There is no culture that should take us out of scriptural culture. The Bible remains relevant for all ages, relevant for all generations. So rebellion against the covenant of fulfilled married life can keep any marriage under tension. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, every marriage is coming off every form of tension. Psalm 68 and verse 6, it says, God set the solitary in families. We also know from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 to 25, the Bible says the husband is the head of the wife for administrative purposes. And we know that the husband is to love the wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So the husband who is at the top must be sacrificial, just like Jesus is sacrificial. And then the wife is told what to do. Honor the husband. Husband, love the wife. So it is clear. The terms are clear. When we try to rewrite the covenant terms, it is called rebellion. So we get back to the book and look for what the book has said concerning a covenant fulfilled married life. If you hear, shout, I hear. Finally, number four, to calm the storms in every challenged marriage. We see in scriptures that separation is not an option. By separation, what we mean is that one part of the family is living in one part of the world and another part is living in another part of the world. Husband separated from wife. That initial separation for comfort can end up being a separation in disaster. Remain together as husband and wife. If you are going to relocate, relocate together. If you are going to remain here, remain here together. But whatever the case is, we must ensure that the two partners who have become one flesh must never find an occasion for separation. If you hear, shout, I hear. Because what happens? Sexual immorality finds room, finds a way into such families because of the separation that is created between husband and wife. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. One thing is sure, that under this prophetic service today, God shall calm every storm in every marriage here represented in the name of Jesus. So here we have the four keys. The four keys to ensuring that every challenge stormy home can receive peace once again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as a result of the prophetic declarations coming upon us in just a moment, by the next covenant marital breakthrough service, there will be amazing testimonies of storms that were calmed in the name of Jesus. And let me hear the loudest amen. amen. If you receive God's word today, lift up your hands and appreciate him and give him the praise, give him all the glory, give him all the honor. With your hands lifted up, magnify the King of Kings. Give him praise, give him glory. You know you have made a choice to serve him as the anchor that is required to be a part of the blessedness of this revival season. Lift your hands, express your choice right now. Express your choice and express your choice. Father, we honor you and we give you all the praise and all the glory. It is done in Jesus' precious name. In this midst of the year revival season, you and I shall be revived. Did I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Celebrate the King of Kings with a big hand of praise this afternoon. One thing is needed. Salvation is key. What a sinner needs or one who is living in sin or living in unforgiveness is regeneration. What one who can experience, who is already born again but asleep, is revival. You can't be a part of a revival without first being alive. 
Revive means to reawaken. So it means that there was life at one point. You are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want your sins forgiven you. You want your name written in the book of life. Please give me the opportunity to pray for you. God who saved us through his son Jesus is available to save you, wash you, and give you a clean slate this afternoon. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to walk with God. I want my name written in the book of life. I want my name taken out of the book of death. I want a repositioning in Christ. Wherever you are, can I ask you this afternoon to please rise on your feet? I'll be praying for you in just a moment. Go ahead. Stand on your feet. I want to give my life to Jesus in this fourth service. People are standing everywhere. Please stand boldly, without fear, without shame. Also, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? It means you were once born again, but for one reason or the other, you departed. Your love has waxed cold. There is no more joy. There is no more peace. You've lacked or you have lost hope of the future. You want to return back to Jesus this afternoon? Why not? We would like to pray for you as well. Will you join us? Please stand on your feet. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to be reconnected. God bless you as you stand up everywhere right now in the fourth service. Father, thank you. Be thou exalted. Everyone who is standing up, please place your right hand in your chest. And let's pray this very simple prayer of faith together. Pray and say after me, Lord Jesus. Louder, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. Forgive me all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Jesus, today I confess that you are my Lord and that you are my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm now born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me provide you. Heavenly Father, thank you for my precious brothers and sisters that have made a decision today to make you Lord, Savior, and Master over their lives. Make this decision last for eternity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree that none of these ones will return to their vomit again. Each one of them shall remain planted each one of them shall remain established in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for it is in Jesus' precious name we pray. And someone that is glad will shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. Please make sure that you fill the forms being given to you right now very correctly and our officials will pick them back from you before this service is over and hand you over a card. Please make sure you take that card to any of the new convert tents around the tabernacle and submit that card and we'll be giving you a very special gift that will help to build you up and help to edify you in the faith and in this church. Please make sure that you're a part of that. Also, we have our Believers Foundation class. This class takes place every Monday. You have two Mondays to attend this class starting from tomorrow Monday and then the following Monday. Please ensure that you are a part of it. If your details are filled correctly, our officials will reach out to you about the closest location to where you are. For one reason or the other, you can't make the live class. You can attend it online. And the description is right there on the screen, bfc.lfcww.org. Please make sure you are a part of it, either live in person or online. And the Lord bless you richly. In Jesus' precious name. And let me hear a fully revived amen. amen. Will you please join me, rise on your feet this moment as we receive God's servant as he releases the blessing upon us in this fourth service. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Give Jesus the biggest hand of praise. May the light shed today restore peace and tranquility in every family. Yeah. May everyone's future come alive supernaturally today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I have you say with me, light is sweet. And it's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Now, what exactly do you desire as a person today, 
as it leads to your marital breakthrough. You want new dimension of peace in your home. You want a spiritual awakening in your family. You want joy to be restored in fullness. You want the marital siege over your life lifted. You want to be set to this year in marriage. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Ask God what you want. You have not because you ask not. Is God's agenda for us to enjoy his provisions on the earth. One of them is marital bliss, marital beauty, marital color. Make demand for it right now. Make demand for it right now. Make demand for it right now. For your sons, for your daughters that are overset for marriage. Your brothers, your sisters that are overset for marriage. Make demand for it right now. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet, was he preserved? Every marital siege must give way today. Every marital barrier must give way today. Every marital tension must be over today. In the name of Jesus. Every runaway husband, runaway wife must return this week. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Every son, daughter creating concern for you in any way, in one form or another, the concern must be over. They shall come under the arrest of Christ and settle back with God in the name of Jesus. Make your demand, make your demand, make your demand, make your demand. Every heartache that is connected to marriage must be over today. Must be over today. Every marital infirmity, every marital assault must be over today. Now speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Speak to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Speak to the Lord from the depth of your heart. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. From the teaching we just had, a commitment or a covenant to serve God with all your heart and with the whole of your desire is your guarantee for all and rest, including marital rest. Lord, and fire my heart to move to the next level in my stewardship. Go ahead and pray. And fire me to move to the next level in my kingdom advancement and divorce. Call for that now. Call for that now. Call for that now. Call for that now. If you will do what he commands to do, you won't have to beg him to do what he says he will do. When we do what he commands us to do, we have committed him to do what he says he will do. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. Now, Lord, and fire my stewardship to another level. And fire my stewardship to another level. And fire my kingdom advancement prayer to another level. And fire my passion for souls to another level. Pray a revival order of prayer. And, and fire my stand to live a life that pleases you to another level. And fire my consecration to another level. And fire my sanctification to another level. Somebody's praying. Somebody's praying. Somebody's praying. If it's well with us spiritually, it will be well with us everywhere. If it's well with us spiritually, it will be well with us everywhere. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. Now ask God to revive your spirit, everybody. Revive my spirit, O oh God, to another level. Revive my spirit, O oh God, to another level. And revive my spirit to another level. Thank you, Father. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. is the biggest of all deeds in the kingdom. Matthew 6.33 covers all areas of a man's life. When it becomes one's genuine way of life, you have committed God to do what he says he will do by adding unto you all these things that he knows you need. For your heavenly father knows that you have need of this, but 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Don't bother about those things. He will add them to you. Perus kakata, erupikiandota, mezuzuriande shugenemo. Grace to connect with this mystery. Receive it today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> By his grace, I'm watching my life on a film. I'm watching God walking. And people think I'm walking. I'm just simply what he said God was walking with them, <laughs> confirming his war with signs following. May every winner worldwide step into this realm of life today. Yeah. Where you are merely fronting for God, and God is the one at work. He's the one walking the walk, and they are clapping for you because they think you are the one. He says, Tony Amirande. I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that that becomes your new experience. Yeah. When you are on the go for God, you are merely fronting for him. They say, oh, we saw devils. I was there. You were fronting for me. I beheld Satan fell from heaven. You just saw demons going out. I saw Satan himself falling down from heaven, tumbling down. Hmm? I gave you power and I, I was there to watch over the power that delivers. You keep watching your life in the film. I decree an end to the struggles of your life today. <laughs> Somebody believe it, let me hear your loudest amen. <laughs> this week, separated homes will be reunited. <laughs> Every siege of marital delay is finally over. As many are said to be settled in marriage, the year 2023 is declared your year. Yeah. It's declared your year. Yeah. That general curse is broken today. Yeah. That diabolical curse is open to, is broken today. Yeah. That yoke of the wicked is destroyed today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so shall it be. I decree that today marks a new dawn in your life. Yeah. All round rest becomes your new experience in life. Yeah. You not only be a success in your career, you be a success in every area of your life. Yeah. Your family success will attract many others to Christ. Yeah. Your spiritual next level will move many others to Christ. In the precious name of Jesus. This week you will have a testimony. This week you will have a testimony. This week you will return with a testimony. It's starting from now. It's starting from now. It's starting from now. You know the viability, the liability, the dependability of this mystery. A friend of mine said to me, Brother David, it's time to pray for life partners. I, I don't need it. My own is covered. He said, how? I said, Matthew 33. I knew that time that it covers all leaders of life. I knew as I then, in the heat of that revelation, I knew that it covers all leaders of life. And it did. So I never prayed for a marriage. I never prayed for who to marry. It was added. Every valuable thing you see in my life today, he added it. He, he added this. I never look for one. He added it. I've been on several prayer episodes. I never asked God for things for me. Jesus, what's the next? Nemonotas, Canarudia, what's the next? Akenko Temo, Elarande, what's the next? My God. We got married, though. No room for honeymoon. No space. What's happening, David? I got a meeting somewhere. And then another somewhere. There were no offerings in those days. You know what I'm talking about? That you went to preach to give you offering for what? For preaching. Thank you, Brother David, for coming. Find your way. <laughs> so there was no material motivation but my heart. Panting after God. Restlessly but delight somebody. Restlessly but delight somebody. The first week passed. Second week passed. First month, 
I said, look, what do we want? One week or two weeks only more, or a lifetime only more? Lifetime, oh, no, let's, let's carry on. I've been rolling like this, oh, since those days till now. I was on the field this week three times looking for souls. <laughs> Amen. We returned with 760 new converts. 760. I've been jumping around like that since 76. My friend, wake up. When God takes over your areas, your issues, they are over. He takes over your business, pff, over. Takes over your family, it's over. Today must mark the end of struggling over issues that Christ has already taken care of. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yes. From your sons and daughters, you will have good news. Yes. From your grandsons and daughters, you will have good news. Yes. A woman was with me last Sunday, 87 year old, in the sanctuary, is it? 84, 84 year old, serving the Lord. My mother was a sanctuary keeper till the day she died. Just two weeks before she died, she didn't go there. Life, this thing, it's sweet, it's sweet, it's sweet. In the name of Jesus, you and your spouse will live long together. <laughs> your sons and daughters will do exploits in your lifetime. Amen. No one here will bury any of their children. Yeah. You'll never bury your grandchildren. Yeah. No one here will die young. Yeah. A good old age is declared your portion. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him thanks, everybody. Give Jesus thanks. Give him thanks, everybody. Congratulations. Please get seated for a moment. Another big hand for Jesus. Amen. This is an awesome week. It shall be a most fruitful week for you. Yeah. It shall be a week of spiritual turnaround for you. Yeah. You know, something interesting about God, when your cloud is full, no devil can stop your rain from falling. So grace to fill your cloud in this midst of the year for your rain of fearful favor to start falling. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. No one here will miss this season of divine visitation. We're looking forward to some days of uh, what's it, a public holiday this week. Take advantage of it and enhance your rate of filling the cloud. And Jesus will honor it in Jesus' name. Next Sunday is our encounter with destiny service. Every destiny under siege shall be recovered. Yeah. Every destiny being sat upon by the wicked shall be liberated. Yeah. Every stagnated destiny shall be loosed. Yeah. Watch out for it. One genuine encounter with God through his war is worth much more than a lifetime of effort. Watch out for it. What is about opening new chapters to your life. New chapters to your life. Things will be happening at a rate you least imagine. He said, let them go that they may serve me. You are out to serve him. You must go off the clutches of the wicked and experience the fullness of God's agenda for your life. So come prepared to be a part of that and you'll be glad you did. We are about entering the second half of this midst of the year. You will not be left behind. No one here shall be an onlooker. Everyone shall be a bona fide, full partaker of the blessedness of this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, it was said in the message, but for double emphasis, if you cannot go out after souls, by reason of age or your work schedule or any other reason. You can pray up from your prayer closet. You can pray up. God who sees your labor 
on the prayer altar in secret has vowed to reward you openly. So nobody is disadvantaged. Anna was interceding and serving God at 84, day and night. So engaging the prayer altar is a stewardship platform that is open to all the aged. Anybody who can eat can pray. Anybody who can eat can pray. And how much we need prayer today? All winners are all over town, distributing flyers and witnessing to people. We need to harvest them in. We need to engage in prayer for the enemy to lose his grip of them so they can come under cover in Christ. In this church. Can I hear your amen? Yes. So we have a lot of things to pray about. And we have our prayer bulletins. I mean, they have been reviewed and packaged. And they're on the website. 30, 30 prayer items on each one ready to go. I mean, the scriptures you are going to engage is in the inside, inside there. Before you read anyone to half to 15, the prayer, the spirit of prayer has come upon you. You are just praying on an auto platform. Auto, auto. It's oozing from you. It's going forth from you. There is nobody who believes in anything and does not have time for it. There is no one who believes in anything and does not have time for it. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. If you know this thing holds something for you, you will create time for it. So please, don't watch this thing pass you by. Your prayer this new week must not be like last week. Something must be added, something extra. Can I hear your amen? amen. It's very sweet, but until you prove it, you can't know it. <laughs> it's a proof me now. And watch whether what I'm saying is the truth or not. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, prove it. Prove it by your obedience. So we prove the truth by our obedience. We prove, look, I have overproved Matthew 6, 33 by grace. By grace, I've overproved it. Man, a man that never begs, 76 to date. Is he a magician? No, he's a miracle man. Praise God. He's a sign and a wonder. By doing what God says, he has committed God to keep doing what he says he will do. God will turn a new thing out of you. Amen. Your church has never appeared for fun. Please, we are doing a project. Ask God leading something in your heart. You don't need anything in your heart. Just give your heart to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your life will become a sweet adventure. Amen. Just prove the truth with your obedience. Every truth you discover, prove it with obedience, and you see how real God is. Stand to your feet. Amen. You have heard some word on marriage today. Don't be rebellious. Don't be rebellious. You don't stay in the same spot. Respond to it. His foolishness is whiter than men. <laughs> Whatever God says is final over any issue. You subscribe to it, you are in dominion. You have committed God to confirm it. There shall be no crisis in your home anymore. Amen. The bragging of husbands, the arrogance of wives is all over. Amen. Just subscribe to what God says and watch God decorate your life, your family, your children before your very eyes. That shall be your experience. That shall be your experience. That shall be your experience. Young people are out looking for the next phase of their marital life. Pray not to jump into any wrong hand. It can be a lifelong regret. Don't let it come on the line just one step more to get into God's agenda for your life. Don't let it. Settle down. Don't manage a non-believer. It's a risk. It's a risk. It will be saved tomorrow. Who told you? Nobody. Settle down. Refuse to be on. Equally, you will be refused to. You know what I told God why God is doing whatever he's doing in my life? Whatever you cannot do, leave, let it be undone. But to go outside your will, never. Lord, never. And I say never. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Something good will happen to you. Amen. Something good will happen to you. Amen. Don't be part of trying to break another family. You are destroying your own future. Don't. Don't just look up to God and He will set all the rest of your life. He said, You have two eyes. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? 
Anytime you are looking onto man, don't claim to be looking onto me. But if you fix, fix your eyes on me, you'll never be ashamed. The good news is that the days of shame and reproach are over in your life. Everybody asking, when are you going to get married? They will join to celebrate your marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ. I therefore declare a new day and a new dawn on your life. Lift up your two hands, everybody. And give God thanks from the depth of your heart. Give God thanks. This season must not pass me by. I refuse to allow this season to pass me by. It's my world visitation. I won't let it go. 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 I'm set for a new dawn in my spiritual life, my marital life. I'm set to see God take over in all areas of my life. Somebody's given thanks. Give him thanks. Give him glory. The week is your week. Everything is speaking in your favor. Everything is speaking in your favor. Everything is speaking in your favor. It shall be your week of testimony. It shall be your week of good news. It shall be good news from everywhere. Good news from home. Good news from your children. Good news from your spouse. Good news from your business. It shall be a week of good news. Revival time is a time of turnaround. It shall be a week of turnaround for you. As you keep engaging, only goodness and mercy will be following you. All the days of your life. Not for a while, but for all times. That shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. For all the blessings of the day, lift your hand before the Lord and let us give God the glory. This afternoon, what a good God. What a faithful God. He has decorated us, transformed us by his word. He has released the prophetic blessings upon our lives. Let's give him the glory for the testimonies that we have already taken delivery of by the encounter of today. Father, thank you. And blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed as you do. If you came in after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering and be blessed as you do so. All our new converts, don't forget to take the We Love You card you have been given to any of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. Drop the card and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you and be blessed as you do so in Jesus' name. Let's quickly clear the way for the sanctuary to keep us to complete the assignment. God bless you.